Morning viewer, David Hartley. Um, today I'm setting off on an adventure. I'm going to China today and I'm going to drive back from Peking to Paris with the ERA, the Endurance Rally Association, reenacting a famous rally that was first completed in 1907. Um, so it's going to be a marathon journey. I better warn you it's going to be a marathon video. Strap yourself in because you're coming all the way with me to see the cars, the hotels, the journey, the drama, the excitement, everything. Nothing's going to be spared. Um, so next stop, the airport. So here you find me in the luxury, the isolation, the quietness of the Virgin Lounge, which is a very pleasant way to fly. And I've met up with my business partner, co-driver and chief mechanic, Steve Hoddick, who's driving the P2P. Steve, what are your feelings sat here looking forward to the P2P? What, what, how do you feel about it? I'm actually glad that we works out the way everything sorted with work and that we can finally you know, get down to what we've been preparing for for two years. Exactly. Next stop the plane and then Shanghai. And a bit miserable in Heathrow but that's our plane getting ready to roll. Morning viewers, it's uh, Wednesday morning. It's uh, 10 to 8 Shanghai time. The experienced traveller always lives the time zone of his destination. So I've slept about nearly six hours if it was eight o'clock, six hours, which isn't bad. Uh, I'm going to have my breakfast now and get myself together. Uh, next stop, Shanghai, the hotel. On a very lightly loaded version flight into Shanghai, half an hour to run. Let's check on Steve. Steve, did you have a good night? How many hours sleep? Two hours, there you go. Now, viewers, we're taking the maglev train from Shanghai down to the um, town centre downtown but what I want you to look at is the speed. Look at that, going up and up all the time. Will the Datsun do that speed? I doubt it. Look at that speed, 430 kilometers an hour. Wow, now we're tearing. Corridor in the Royal Le Royal Meridian Hotel Shanghai which is near the Bund. For those of you who know uh, Shanghai, I'll show you our room. Um, Steve, what do you think? Is it adequate? Judith. Two little uh, beds there. It's nice. Have a look out the window. It's nice. Lovely. Look at that pervasive smog yeah. and it's over there. That's the price we're paying for our cheap imported goods, pollution on the other side of the world. Never mind, we're not here that often. Um, down there to the Bund. We'll be exploring there later. I know what you're going to say, viewer, how much have I paid for this hotel? 40... no, no, £100 a night. So this is Shanghai, polluted, congested, overcrowded. The sooner we go, the better. Uh, but masses and masses of people and uh, shops and everything. It's a modern China, not for me. Slowly we wend our way towards Beijing and we're at the Shanghai Railway Station now to take the overnight train to um, Beijing, Peking. So just in a vast, vast waiting room now, waiting for our the train waiting for the doors to open but this is just one of I don't know hundred you know one of 25 uh, waiting rooms in the station it's just incredible large. so that's the corridor on our train and this is our little um, compartment in here it's very nice isn't it very sweet carpeted and everything it's lovely very nice we've only got, we've got, we've got a little ensuite toilet here well, it's very nice so we've got the table tonight in the dining car and we're eating surprise surprise Chinese. What do you think Steve? I'm not sure if it's pork or chicken. Yeah, it's very hard to tell. So we've arrived at the huge hotel, the Shangri-La in Beijing. I can see some familiar rally faces and uh, we're going to check in. I can see, I know these ladies, you with the rally. You look like rally drivers. Uh, no, we are the woman of rally. Oh, okay, yes. You, you, that's, that's even better. That's the corridor in our hotel. There's a very nice hotel here. I'll show you my room. I'm just going to settle in and have a bath now. Nice. I've actually spent extra money here so I can, Steve and I can have our own rooms. I know you're thinking, what did I pay for a night? I got it on Expedia. It's £100 sterling a night. So, not bad. It's fine. I know you'll be a bit sick of hotel rooms here by the end of this. But I'm um, going to have my bath now. So, we've run into some fellow Datsun drivers. Do you want to introduce yourself to our viewers? I am Chris Murray, and I'm TJ Murray. Tell me something, why did you choose the Datsun? Because I read the article on the 2013 race, and they said a Datsun would be a good car, and I had a Datsun sitting in my garage at the bottom of Chris, and he had them restored. Wow, that's good, that's reassuring for us. Well, hopefully they're in our team, so let's hope they do well. 
the coach winds its way around slow Beijing traffic and is taking us from the hotel to the warehouse to hopefully collect our car. So we've arrived in the warehouse, there's our car, our trusty Datsun 240Z, car number 98, you should be seeing a lot of this. Steve's going to see if we if will actually start now, let's hope so. That's the Shangri-La Hotel, this is, these are the ERA vehicles, the cars are parked up, very exciting, we made it back here. You see that, that blue sheet to stop kind of oil leaking on the floor. Steve, what are your first impressions of the car? Are you think it's okay? So far, so good. There you go. We've made it back here. That's all that matters. We can have some lunch now. Into two guys you might recognise from the Madrid to Marrakesh video. Do you just want to tell our viewers, for those who haven't seen M2M, -M, who you are and what car you're in and all that? Just, just... Well, I'm Richard Thompson. This is Paul. Hello, guys. What car are you in? 1940 Studebaker. And has that proved reliable in the past? Very. Four <laughs> to five days. <laughs> <laughs> Good, well we'll see what happens in, I'll see you hopefully in day six, see how you're getting on. <laughs> the view of the concrete jungle that is Beijing from my hotel room. And um, you can see down there, if you look in the car park, you can see all the uh, cars, competitors cars parked up uh, for the rally. We'll go down and look at them in detail tomorrow, but uh, tonight is the uh, cocktail party. Still manoeuvring around and messing about down there. Know by Nigel and Steve, veterans of the M to M. Guys, what do you hope to get out of the P to P? What are your ambitions for the P to P? I think the car. Sorry, did you ask me a question? Yes. What are your ambitions for the P to P? Um, to to reach Paris. There you go. That's good. Nigel, what's yours? Same. Uh, no. Are we going to Paris? So the first evening, the competitors are milling around, having. Uh, kind of drinks, I guess, they call it a cocktail evening. Steve and I are off to look at the cars now. Good morning viewers. So it's kind of rally uh, minus one. That is, it's the day before the rally starts. So it's Saturday today, rally starts Sunday morning. And today they do the kind of scrutineering it's called. They check the cars are roadworthy before you can set off and they give you all the documentation, which takes quite a long time. So we're doing that today after I've had my breakfast. See you later. Gives you some idea of the scale of the, of the rally. So many people. So tonight we're having a ball in the a, a dinner in the ballroom. I just want to show you, viewers. You think the rally's easy? Look at this menu. I've got to eat my way through. All that I've got to try and consume tonight. God, God. Principal Gating would be proud of us and our finder, Philip Young, uh, who had the idea to recreate Peking to Paris, would be proud of us. So, around the table, they're tucking into their free Chinese meal. Lovely. Look at those desserts, viewers. Incredible. That's good, I like that. Strange large bear. I just want to show you a bit of our hotel. I know I video hotels a bit too much, but this is a very nice hotel actually. Very nice. Convivial and relaxing, oriental, and it's a very nice hotel. Anyway, we'll, we'll be checking out tomorrow morning and heading for the wall and the start. Morning viewers. After about, I don't know, two years of waiting, maybe more, it's finally what they call day one of the rally. So today is the day we leave our hotel, we drive to the Great Wall of China, then we drive on from there. So the rally has started. We drive to Peking. We drive. We leave Peking today. We drive to Paris. A bit tired this morning. Uh, cars are starting up at four o'clock in the morning. One thing about the rally is you have to be prepared to get up very early. It's very tough. So it's six o'clock in the morning now. I'm going to go and have breakfast. I'll show you the sign. For, I'll show you the site for my um, hotel bedroom now. There we are. Most of the cars, most of the cars have gone. But my theory is, if someone asks you to be somewhere at a certain time, be there. But don't be too early, especially if you can get some extra sleep. So uh, the cars are gone and they've been throbbing since the early hours. Anyway, next stop, the Great Wall. Here we are, early morning at the Great Wall. There's the Great Wall, one of the visible landmarks from space. These tourists are here looking at the car. Nigel's here. It's one of the cars here, which is the Mini on the M2M, car number 34. That's Christine. 
Hello, Christine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. How are you? Very morning. good. It's lovely in there. Let's go inside that mini. <laughs> cozy, See David, what it's cozy. like. Wow, it's all tucked in here. It's like mission control here. It's like <laughs> I could never get lost yet. Do you want do you want any more stuff here? Well, we're trying wow. to get this GPS, you see, and wow. then we... There's the Chinese band. This is officially the start. We drive through this arch. That's car number one, the La France. It's an absolutely beast of a car. It's, it's massive. I'll show you later. <laughs> American coupes coming in now, a different class of car really, from the kind of 40s Americana. Yeah, they, they do well, they do well, tough looking cars. Yeah, Richard and Paul from the M2M, M2M. they're off now. Where are you going to guys? Uh, we'll probably just try and make it out to China to begin with. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we were happy to get out of the hotel. One day at a time. Aaron, what's your car? My car is a Ford, what, American what? Ford Forte. Wow. And why are you going to Paris? <laughs> I will see how, how, how much further this car can go. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's an incredible sight, really, the walls up there. Starting from there. Very impressive. So we're about to start the Peking to Paris 2016 rally. 96 is starting, 97 and we're 98. So I go to Steve who's driving this little bit. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Uh, yeah, cool. So we're under starters orders. It is a race, but uh, we won't be racing this little bit. There we go, we're away. That's it, the race has started. She's filming us, we are filming her. So we're on the road in China, going down the freeway. Um, so it's not all plain sailing in China, it's not all driving straight down the highway. Look at the congestion here with the trucks and everything. Sign a bit of a Chinese traffic jam here. It's like the wacky race is overtaking here. Look, big trucks overtaking little ones. Rally cars, good God. This is the perils of driving in China. Look at that view. And then that would be one of the rallies. Good God. The rally every day we stop for lunch that we have to pay for. Chinese restaurant, but we mostly eat rice. Um, lovely. <laughs> so we arrived into Datong, into the hotel. A little bit of bureaucracy where we hand in our passports, they scan them, return them, and then off to our rooms. But an easy first day, really. Look at this Chinese city, the sprawl of overdevelopment. Imagine living in one of those little apartments. God. More apartments there and more apartments on the horizon. The other end of the spectrum, the rally cars are arriving and being parked down there. So uh, we've, we've had a good day today. We've enjoyed it. Hey, we've done our first day on the rally. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm really buzzed up about it. Good. The car, how's she holding up? Yeah, yeah, pleased so far. Good, great. Okay, one day done. Let's get to day two. Good morning, viewers. It's day two of the rally. We're in Aaron Hot still. We're in the hotel. And uh, we shortly leave. Sorry, we're in Datong today. And we leave for Aaron Hot. Um, our routes have actually been changed today because of Chinese military maneuvers. Don't forget what a threat they are in this region. Um, so, kind of easy driving, hopefully on tarmac, just a longer day than yesterday, should be twice the uh, distance, roughly. Um, so, we're off soon. Absolute ugliness of these towns. Absolutely terrible. Look, the army's on the move, we shouldn't really be videoing them. Um, we're overtaking. It's not all glamour on the rally, sometimes you have to rough it, and in this case it involves stopping at a Chinese service station and eating food by the bit. Be warned, viewers. Well, view, you'll probably guess that's a dinosaur. Why? Dinosaur, 
biggest dinosaur bones are found in this area, Aaron Hot. So to commemorate it, there's a few dinosaurs and there's even some huge dinosaurs over there uh, crossing the highway. There's some more dinosaurs here. Now, would you ever do this in the UK? Just stop randomly on the hard shoulder to do some videoing? No. Well, that's why we leave the UK behind. <laughs> right, now. I'm going to carry on driving, viewer. Dangerous, I know, but... I'll change gear. You just yeah, you change gear. Clutch. Yep, gear. Good. I'm just going to drive slowly here. And... Uh, Go to the So look at that, viewers. Those are the famous Ehrenhot dinosaurs, which uh, welcome you to Ehrenhot. Viewers, this is what we follow every single day, religiously. These bulletins and squiggles, they tell you exactly where to go, and you go from A to B, you can go from Peking to Paris if you follow these. But where do they come from? I'll tell you where they come from. They come from Kim Bannister. Kim, you tell me a bit about it. How do you, how do you get this? Um, well, it's simple, really. When we drive the route, I draw them yeah. by hand, uh, and then I make them look well, You nice. must have to get out and measure all the distances exactly. No, I do. So I do it with a trip meter as we drive them along. Right. So I make a note at the junction, I freeze the trip meter, I draw the junction as we drive through it, and then uh, I Well, on behalf of the competitors, I think you do a great job. Thank you very much. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. So, day two, rally reports. We've arrived at uh, Aaron Hot, we're in the hotel. So. We had a long drive today, it's about 600 kilometers, and there were, you know, events. I made a navigation area in the town we left, which was very busy, which cost us half an hour. But the rally is not just, you know, a rally, it's an experience, and it's a kind of me metaphor for life. And that metaphor for life, I said to Steve today, is, you know, that, you know, it's easy to be cheerful when things are going well. It's, you know, it's important to be cheerful, more important to be cheerful when things are going badly. That's what you could take away from this rally of yours. Um, the fountain there, that's our hotel, all the cars out here. It's been raining like crazy today. Incredible. Bringing their bags in. Great. The hotel we're in today, it's not that grand. That's the little desk the ERA have set up. People sometimes ask me, what happens if your car breaks down and you can't fix it? Well, that's what happens. You get, you, you get a tow truck and it gets towed to wherever you happen to be. And I think that might be Bill's car. Poor old Bill. Nice guy. Never mind. So it's goodbye China. Let's hope I never come here again. I haven't enjoyed being in China. The bureaucracy, the corruption, the pollution, the congestion. No, not for me. So we're leaving now. We're going to the Chinese border and then into Mongolia. It gives me an opportunity to film some cars. So this is an AMC, an American car with two British gentlemen in. Hi guys, you like your AMC? It's quite noisy, they've got headsets in there, they're raised up. It's like Dukes of Hazard or something, isn't it, in there? What's it like, the car? Why did you choose this car, seriously? <laughs> Hang on, let's go around. Look, they've got a shovel and everything there. So tell me, tell our viewers why you chose this car. How many viewers have you got? Uh, millions. 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 Short overhang, not too heavy. Great, that's good. And powerful, is it? Big what does it cruise at? Wow, good. That's car 113 of Dana from the Madrid to Marrakesh. So tell me, why have you changed your car for a Porsche? No comment. No comment. <laughs> on the truck, that's number one, La France. Remember it at the start? That doesn't augur well. See that rainbow? Wow, incredible. We're just at the building for the uh, exit here. All the cars parked oh, up. Good. Yeah. So we're at the Chinese exit border, the cars are kind of queuing up. I just think the essence is being patient and uh, just waiting. There's nothing we can do to influence the process really, so we're just waiting to get through. Well, that's the first sign I've seen that says welcome to Mongolia, so it must be nearly there. But we do have to carry on clearing customs. Look at that beautiful empty road car. kind of bumpy, sandy, corrugated tracks of Mongolia we're trying to drive across. Wow, it's hard, but we can do it. So we're on a test section, and that basically means you can drive down here as quickly as you can. There are no limits here. The only problem is we've got a problem with our navigation, so we're literally following the dust of the big lane ahead. Steve's doing a great job. How's it going? There you go. 
Peter Parish Rally and you're in Mongolia, this is your absolute aim to get to the campsite. Aim to the campsite. We've got a pitch out there so we can get it. And it's going to rain, so I'm going to get on with it. I'll show you around the camera. Tonight, it's like we're in the military. We're eating in a canvas tent. Can't wait, I'm starving. It's the nomads. The guys that sort out everything and. Uh, Guys, do you want to wave for the camera? Say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone in the UK. Hello. Hi. Thanks. They do all the hard work. Thanks a lot. Around, really, in the middle of the desert. Nothing here. Apart from the rally. Uh, all the cars and the tents were all pitched up. It's good. Great. Wow. There you go. All around. Introduce you to Andy, who's absolutely saved my hello. life. By inflating my tent, I want to nominate him for some kind of special award for the URA. For look at my little tent now, then. All part lovely, of the service. lovely, Andy. Thanks a lot. That's brilliant. Well, exactly. What's your normal job, seriously? Oh, I am a doctor. Really? <laughs> I'm one of the team, wow! So, you know. I didn't. I thought you were one of the mechanics. No, I didn't no, know no, that. I'm one of the doctors. I'm now joined by Jerry, who's a bit of a legend in rally circles, aren't you, Jerry? Uh, I don't know about that. You well, you won the last one, didn't you? <laughs> you're you're a very fast driver with a very fast car, so uh, I, I and I hope I'm doing as well later on. So, yeah. but let's look at that wheel. What do you think, viewers? Do you think a wheel should look like that? I don't think so. Um, I think the better need to get that changed. Car one one one. What is it? A Mercedes two eighty S S two point eight one one six. Is it in Wow, nice. Let's go and look in there, viewers. Let's see what it's like. Wow, it's nice. Like a limo in here. <laughs> we even have air con. No way. Oh, God. Can I swap? Do you want the Datsun? No. Okay. <laughs> there we go. You've got all your stuff. We, um, we can't even bring any stuff. Driving on the dusty tracks of um, Mongolia. Mongolia that go on and on and on. Thinking about doing this rally for you, be prepared to have a lot of stamina. Well, viewers, disaster has befallen us. Our radiator is split and leaking, so we are not going anywhere for a while. We're at a little the end of a time control. I honestly don't know what we're going to do. I guess the sweeper mechanics will help us, but it's a bit miserable, especially I'm not feeling 100% today. So the car in front, a Nomad's 4x4, is, is towing us. Um, to a place where we can hopefully load onto that truck. We say goodbye to our French friends who are waiting for an oil truck. So, the Datsun is now being craned onto the back of that lorry. It's quite an anxious moment. So the Datsun's going up, we're trying to load it now. Tense time. So our faithful driver is driving the truck. Well, it's only probably another five hours to Ulaanbaatar. So unbelievably, the uh, live driver in his wisdom has decided to come off the main path for some reason, I don't know, maybe he's got some water from that little well and managed to stick his lorry into soft sand. It's not going well, viewers, it's not going well. I'm ready to quit the P2P. Steve said quit now, I'd say fine, no problem. No quitting. <laughs> no. Viewers, that's the view from my hotel window, that's the view of Ulaanbaatar. Quite a large city in a small and poor, in a large country. But, and I thought I'd show you my hotel room. We haven't seen that many hotel rooms on this trip. This is the upgraded meter suite, which is rather nice. Um, so, lovely. Um, so where are we in terms of the rally? So the car is broken. Steve's trying to fix it. We didn't get into a 230, horrendous journey. Will the car continue? Can I continue? I really don't know. Uh, but we're going to find out tomorrow. See you later. Hello viewers, rally report. Well, it's the end of the rest day. We're in Ulaanbaatar today, as you know. Thank God we had a rest day because I'm revitalised, recharged, ready to go again, feeling better. And had a lovely uh, dinner tonight and entertaining company. Um, so tomorrow's another day and we're back on track. Steve's managed heroically to get the Datsun fixed. And by spending the whole day in the garage, well, I went shopping for essentials, so tomorrow we're back on the road. I just want to show you, before I go to bed, the night lights of Ulaanbaatar. Now, bear with me, because the video takes a little while to focus on the lights, but uh, there you go. There's incredible affluence in uh, Ulaanbaatar. You see um, Bentleys and 
Porsche dealerships and Mercedes G wagons and all that. You see poverty outside of uh, the capital though. So look at it, it's quite a big metropolitan place. Um, so tomorrow we, we go to the Genghis Khan Square for the start of the next day. Just one more thing I want to say viewers on my mind. Have a guess how much we had to pay for that lorry to extract us from the Gobi Desert. Go on, shout out now. You're wrong, too low. It was $1,500, that's right, $1,500, which maybe we can afford, but uh, relative to Mongolia, that's very expensive. The average Mongolian, how much do you think they earn a month? Have a guess, $390 a month. So $1,500 is a hell of a lot. There'll be a lot of celebrating in Mongolia once the rally passes through, I tell you. Anyway, I guess it's kind of market-based pricing, it's only probably what I do, but I just wanted to let you know. Don't break down in Mongolia. So this is Genghis Khan Square. I'm going to show you. That's obviously Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan Square. Uh, I'm going to show you the marching band. Oh, we stayed in, by the way, the blue sky. Very impressive. Very impressive for Ulan Bator, isn't it? Very nice. It's all going off here. Lovely. That's a nice car, isn't it? Oh, well, that's one of the La France's, the small La France. You know the hammer. Didn't you think it started, but car number two, still here. One of the trusty, reliable old Volvos. Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh, I think that's... no. Yeah, I think that's the Germans, maybe. Lovely. Jackie, is your car fixed now? All fixed. Wow, Thanks, that's very impressive. You're real spirit of the rally, getting it sorted. Great car. Yep. This guy's outfit. That's good. Typical Mongolian. How are you? Good morning, Jackie. Andrew very does well, all the PR you. on the on the rally. How's the oh, PR going? Very well, thank you. Very good. Well. And the award for the shiniest car on the rally goes to the, the uh, Bristol. Very shiny. There's the Australian Volvo. This car has actually been rolled. Would you believe? Wow. There's fast drivers. Hey, he's not in the rally, he's actually following us. He's remembering from the campsite. BY. So this is early morning traffic, Ulaanbaatar style. He's taken us, how long Steve? An hour and 15 minutes. To do eight kilometers. So I could have walked in that time quite comfortably. Um, anyway. You watch that car in front, that's Adrian in his uh, RPS built Peugeot. But what I want to show you is when he goes quicker, that car is like bouncing all the way up and down the place. You can't really see it, but anyway, can you see it now, viewers? Look at him bounce up and down, that a night night car. No disrespect, Adrian. <laughs> Section here, the Mustang's battling out with an old classic. Look at that Mustang go. Steve's doing his best. We're trying not to destroy the car. Following the tracks across Mongolia. Wait, I'll take some more of the Mustang. Yeah, there's the Mustang. Look at him go. Car 99. That's you. Carry on watching this video. Don't give up now. <laughs> so we're joined now by two Hong Kong-based, self-made multi-millionaires on the rally. <laughs> Nigel and Steve. Those uh, are the other two guys. <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting on, guys? Seriously? Oh, we just passed a couple of cars, didn't you? Yeah, yeah that's so, good. I mean, there was two right, Herbert, and a Datsun 240. <laughs> I want to say viewers, he did pass they, me. Were... Now this viewer was the car that Philip Young actually recommended to us, the Hillman Hunter. We didn't buy it, but these guys <laughs> bought it. Are you glad you bought it? Oh, very, very glad. My, uh, Ask me when I get to, to Paris if I'm glad about that's it. That's right, very glad, yeah. Are you taking care for me? now by the lady who does the videoing, <laughs> Julie. I'm turning the camera on her, turning the tables. <laughs> Julie, how's the videoing going? It's going fine, thank you. Let me ask you a kind of professional question. How many hours do you shoot versus how many do you actually arrive at? You know, how much editing do you do? I think we usually shoot about 10 hours a day. 10 hours a day? Which goes down. So 360 hours and you get it down to how many hours? Um, two or two. sometimes 30 minutes. <laughs> wow. Viewers, I shoot on the, I'll be shooting on this one hopefully three hours and it will stay at three hours. <laughs> Now, car 86. Doesn't look like a classic to me, viewers, but it's Come a... on this side, it's a little mud. Come on. It's a... What it... A little mud on that side. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Very nice. 
it's all strange, isn't it? 54 chassis and 86. How are you coping, you're guys, with 51, your position? If you don't mind. You're all right. 51, sorry, yeah. You coping okay? We had a great day, thanks. Good. Just, Good. Over, Good. just about How about all right. you? Yeah, now our car's repaired, the radiator's fixed, we're going again. Great, good for you. Got a Mark II Jag that's still wanted by the police in the UK. They'll go no any distance to get away from them. <laughs> is there a doctor in the car? Yes, there is. How's it going? Um, okay. Good. Oh no. Horses are galloping through, the Datsun's tearing through. There we are, a convoy of cars on the rough stuff. Look at this, Mongolian wildlife. Lovely. Let's hope they don't charge. Can you imagine sat in that seat for 36 days or 33 days of driving? Wow, it's hardcore. It's quite cramped in there. I think the Datsun is cramped, but this is more cramped. It's got a cover of when it rains. Watching this car now. That's what you get with Japanese cars. That's right. We're so mean on the petrol. Tidy looking Porsche. I think it's the 356. I'm no Porsche expert. Sorry if I'm wrong, viewers, but it's a very tidy little car. I think little is the opposite word as well, or I wouldn't particularly like it, even though it looks very nice. It's, it's Jill all the way from Washington, D.C., capital of the U.S. No, no uh, taxation. No representation. Without taxation. Exactly. So, how's it going? How's the rally going for you? Good, but we just missed our goal. So oh, no. We're yeah, but hang on, you might get a dispensation for the heavy traffic this morning, so you might not have missed your goal. There's two guys with a Ford Coupe. They come all you come from they've come all the way from California to Mongolia, number 29. How's it going, guys? It's going real. Good, excellent. We're here. Yeah, that's right. Another Paris. night at camp. That's the important thing. Yeah. And we'll crawl to Paris. We're gonna go yeah. to Paris. Yeah. Here's the AMC just come in. One of the most competitive cars. Unfortunately, they had a little mechanical problem, so... Yeah, he was having some problems. So this looks a bit like, kind of, I don't know, Montana or Austria or somewhere like that. This, but it's actually Mongolia, obviously. Um, so we've made another night, survived another night in our little campsite. So this is the campsite. Um, I'm going to go for dinner now. Joined now by Matt and Matt's girlfriend. Sorry, Alana, tell our viewers, how did you get here? I slashed him on my bicycle. All, all the way from Ulaanbaatar. Yeah, you must be like superhuman. Uh, I don't think so. That is amazing. I just took it one day at a time. Wow. Yeah. This is a reminder, viewers, that rallying is a dangerous sport. This car's rolled about five times and they're still here. They just keep on going. I don't think they'll get their money back on this car. The Australian flag, no jokes about convicts or anything like that. So it's a W123 1975. I want to tell you viewers, the viewers who know me very well know that I love this car. And uh, it's, a, it's a great car, 2.8, it's great. And I've got the two great Australian drivers with me here. Thank Are you, you pleased with your car? Thank you for your kind interest in our tip of... No, we like it, we love it, we love it. It's hard to beat a W123. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's this kind of service centre where the ERA mechanics repair cars in the evening which have been kind of destroyed by the day's rallying so the cars parked up here are all being um, repaired Royce, probably the best car in the world back in those days Rolls Royce Phantom absolutely wonderful car lovely car look at that look at that wow morning viewers it's uh, rally report it's day seven We've got a nice long uh, fast section on tarmac, Steve's driving at the moment, I'm driving the half of it. And so things are looking up really. Just want to show you around. This is a bit like um, Switzerland or something. Look at the trees and uh, it's very lush and green here. Quite a contrast from the desert we experienced only a few days ago. So uh, back on, literally back on the road. That car's just come past us, the well-prepared Dutch Mercedes SL, owners of the uh, Lady in Red. Very nice. Hang on, it started. Hello viewers, back in the driving seat. Steve and I do try and try and save the share the driving. This is a nice easy run. Look at the traffic. Don't you wish the roads in England were like this? I mean here you can just drive you know, as quickly as you want within the margins of safety. It's actually kind of more pleasant to cruise along at a lower speed, ironically, than try and drive it too quickly. So, there you go. You know, 
know that little thing's called viewer? It's called an ovu. Uh, kind of a marking a junction in Mongolia. There's a dancing in typical fashion. Tearing into the end of the time trial. See how that flag is in the red flag? So they start you at one point, you finish there, and you're timed and you're fast, you know, it's great. Whatever. So you see down in the valley there's a village and the lake. So that's where we drive. We drove right through that valley, you know, and cars come tearing up here. But you can see one coming up now. And they come round the corner. See if we can catch one. So here he comes. One of the alphas. Wow. Oh. There you go. If you come on the peak into Paris, viewer, you can pretend to be a rally driver. You are a rally driver. I could have at the lake and the mountains. Lovely here. Like kind of Switzerland in spring. We're in the kind of valley now camping for the evening. Luckily we arrived early, about three o'clock. I'll look at the map and tell you exactly where we are in a minute because I know John Pickford likes to know exactly where we are. This place is called Murren, M-U-R-N. So we've pitched our tents, made our little campsite. But there might be a better one. Steve's gone to explore where there's a better location, so we shall see. Still, it's quite a pleasant camp. We've arrived at a decent hour. I mean, it's only four o'clock now, so it's not a, it wasn't a bad day at all today. It's quite an easy day, actually. So, just showing you around the camp. Car 42 has a very strict policy in terms of allocating work. See who does all the work on that team viewer. See if you can guess. Mark's going to attempt later to escape from the campsite on that. <laughs> what do you think his chances are, viewers? It's a list of all the places we're visiting, so we've done quite a few of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Joined now by one of my favourite people on the, on the rally, Nikki Bannister. It's covered uh, love. And she organises all the hotels and everything. Yeah, so how's it going? How's it all going? It's going well. It's a bit uh, wet and windy here. But, I know, uh, just a little shy. It's trying out, but we've got Sing Along in the tent at the moment. Oh, I think wow. they're doing All My Love In by the Beatles. Oh, so wow. Well, be I'll carry night. on walking around then. I think the uh, alcohol you've got flowing. a fantastic big tent, haven't you? <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice. all right, actually. Oh, it's not as cold as England. Some of the competitors are attempting to escape from the camp by swimming. They're trying to sell this Capri as one careful owner. What do you think, Bjorn? So if you look at this map, you can see we started Beijing and we're now there in Murren. Okay, so we've got quite a long way to go. Around again. The camera cannot really capture the beauty of it all. There's a river. There's our campsite. I wish you climbed up the hill. Yeah, the wow. Incredible. Wow. everyone brushes their teeth. The Alfa Romeos not only drive together, but they park their cars as if expecting an attack from Indians. Very impressive. So today, viewers, the route is so hard that we've actually changed the route and we've deviated. But it's a pleasant deviation because we've got that lovely lake there. Look at that. And, uh, and you can see the navigation. So my navigation. Could you nav ask yourself? Could you navigate the Peter P? Your navigation is keep lake on left. So we just follow these trails. There's the ERA truck chasing down the Mercedes. Uh, chasing down the uh, Rolls Royce Phantom. Nice. So we stopped up for a little bit of lunch, it's nearly one o'clock, a pleasant view of the lake and the mountains, uh, only disturbed by the sound of cars passing. 
Lovely. Very nice. What do you think, Steve? How was this morning? Yeah, it's quite relaxed and uh, good. Yeah, enjoyable, really. Good. Do you have spare lights? Oh dear, the damn is damaged. We set up here in a little um, kind of organisational oh, post no. with uh, Gerard, the photographer, getting some photography. David. I know, I can see, I videoed it. Here's a man who probably hates being videoed, but I tell you something, everyone, Andy, seriously, always rates you as the number one mechanic on the trip. ERA, amazing, there we are, impromptu repair by the side of the road. I don't know if you can see it, if you look at all those plumes of kind of dust and smoke on the horizon, those are the other rally cars, way ahead of us, following the same track. I'm the navigator, but I'm not doing any navigation here. We're just following that smoke, following the dust. When Prince Borghese ran the first P2P, he used to have to follow the telegraph poles from place to place. That's exactly what we're doing so many years later. That's a very welcome sight, our camp for the end of the day. It's been a very, very, very long day today. There's a lake. campsite, nothing nicer than at the end of the day, stopping, driving. Well, there is something nicer than setting up your tent, and that's checking into a nice, luxurious hotel room, but unfortunately that's not available in the middle of Mongolia, so we must set up our little tents again. I suppose every time you do it, it gets a bit easier. What we eat in camp, despite being under campus, they actually do a very good job of preparing all this food, curries and the like, and desserts, I mean, it's a very, very, very high standard. Very nice. Lovely. That huge queue viewer is the queue to get petrol tonight. Fortunately, Steve's right at the back of it. I might go and lend him some moral support. John Pickford said I should always tell us where we are. Where we're in Chargis Lake, I think it's called, it's pronounced. I'm joined now by the first person I've actually spoken to in an interview from Mongolia. What's your name? My name is Grimsa. And where do you live? Excuse me? Whereabouts do you live in Mongolia? I was born in Mongolia. Okay, and what, what do you think of the rally? Do you think it's a good thing for Mongolia, or what do you think of it? It's the best. The I best? Wow, great, good. Well, we must come again then. See you oh, soon. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, you, sir. take care, bye. Bye. Look at those flashes of welding they're doing in camp there, repairing a car, welding it up. Here's a sort of show you inside my little tent. When I say little, it's very little. A big person would not get in this tent. It's one person tent inflatable. And my kind of clothes and stuff are here. I'm in my little sleeping bag now. About to go to bed. It's 11 o'clock. It's still quite light out. There's some sound of car engines, but it won't stop me retiring. Good night, viewers. I've been on the rally for about a week now. So it's Sunday. Tomorrow's another day. Morning, viewers. Rally report, day nine. We're back on the road again. It's raining and miserable this morning. Christ, I want to stay in my tent. But it's not an option. Got to hit the road every single day. There's no plan B, there's no taxi to collect you. So if you look, we're on nice um, kind of sandy, we're on like, reasonable tracks today. In an incredible valley, it's a little bit muddy, that's all, it's been a bit rainy. But the valley's incredible, and, well, we're on the road and that's all that counts. Okay, we're following him to petrol, hopefully. V, hello. Do you want to say hello? Hello. Hello, great. So we stopped here for petrol in a little service station close to a little village because we think we've got a little fuel leak. So, um, what? I said it's not good. <laughs> not good. Understatement. Not good at all. Because if we run out of petrol here, there ain't no petrol. We want to update our viewers with the situation currently. We've uh, got rear left hand damper. Oh dear. The bridge is not in very good repair, so we actually had to cross the river. There are river crossings, luckily the river's quite low. We're, we've stopped for a little impromptu picnic here. Steve's in bad humour because the car is, forgive this language for you, I'm quoting him, a heap of shit. Look at the tracks heading off across the plains there that we're following now. The drama continues, the car is now stuck in the sand and so hopefully we don't get towed out of it. Uh, one of the um, 
media crew has had an injury and broken her thumb. Can you tell me how you did that? Yeah, I was running down a hill trying to rescue somebody that was stuck in some mud and I tripped over a rock and it went between the crevice and I kept going and it just snapped. That's a very imaginative story. <laughs> Power has failed to get us out, so let's hope uh, horsepower in the form of uh, the good doctor's car will get us out. Here we go. I see, I see. Come on. Come on. Come on. I need the 4x4. Four four. Oh, mate, she's moving. She's moving. There we go, we're free, we're on our way, hopefully to camp. What a beautiful spot we're in tonight, and that's actually Chagres Lake. So we're about 300 kilometres or so from the um, Russian border. This is our last night camping in Mongolia. Viewers, if you ever see me go camping again, I give you my permission to shoot me. And I never will do it again. So the suspension on our car has been removed and Steve's going to fit some more. There is a saying, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And we are that friend today because we're in need of Loctite. And Paul has just emptied the whole car to find it. So I just want to say on camera, thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Tough day today, got the cars brought in on trucks. Uh, that looks like a SL. I was all jacked up. Steve's all, I don't know, messed up. How are you feeling? Bad as it could be. I couldn't believe it, it's actually, look at the moon there, it's lovely, it's actually five past ten at night, look at the moon, incredible. What do you think of the fueling in camp? Yeah, with the brake yeah. yeah, behind the rear axle, it must flag up the what, what, what do you think of the fueling situation in camp? Is it any good? just wanted to show you viewers the difference in the sky, look over there. And then look, Peter St. George, who's an old hand at outdoor things, has pointed out to me storm clouds coming in. Hope that's not a metaphor for what's about to happen. There you go, look at that. Wow, look at the sky. Satanic. There they all are. It's like the wacky races here, all ready to charge off to our next campsite. Incredible adventure. One of the competitors has decided to go solo today. Lovely. Ferries are up today, we're on the open road, the tarmac, the beautiful, beautiful look at the lake view. That's absolutely incredible, the size of it, incredible. So, Mongolia is a beautiful country, if unforgiving. The video can't really capture it, but look at the landscape here, it's just incredible. I'll show you something else as well, viewer, look at this. The stuff, the There's no traffic, no cars. Pass one lorry, one car, you know, So we're in a local Mongolian garage here. I know, I know, it's funny. And uh, we put it in the car and we're gonna expect, inspect it and see if we can find out what's wrong with it. So the map said follow the A road. This is the A road. This is like the A16 leading from one road to the other. So as you can see, it's a pretty, you know, it's a fairly bleak spot, but it's, it's nice, quiet, no gawkers, as Steve calls them. So we're having a little picnic in there and then uh, resuming our journey. Unbelievably beautiful, but uh, I'll be glad really getting back to civilization. Give me a hotel, more than beauty. Look at that, viewers, look at the lake. Look at the blueness of it. This is our little diversion down an A road. It's quite a long diversion and it's quite a disappointing a road. quite a disappointing A road. <coughs> but never mind, it's beautiful, beautiful scenery, beautiful day. You know, we're on an adventure, so we've got to keep going. Viewer status update, massive detour, low on fuel, and the navigation system, GPS is kind of playing up. So I'm just relying on my instincts to get us there. If you watch this, I'll have made it. Viewers, I navigated with Satnav and the map to a little one horse town in the middle of nowhere and we found a petrol station because if not, we wouldn't have made it back to camp. We wouldn't have had the petrol. So we're short on money, putting a limited amount of petrol in, get to the next town, get to camp. We survive, we keep going. Spirit of Burin Sport lives on. 
adventure continues. The man who's helping us in this village is a school teacher. So we're just in an English, we're just in a school collecting his family and we're going to his house now. Come with me. So now I'm waiting in a Mongolian teacher's house while Steve has a little nap. Um, waiting for a tractor driver to return from the countryside where hopefully he's going to take her across the river and then we can drive to um, the camp. It's going to be a long night. I'm enjoying a little Mongolian hospitality. This lady's made me a little cup of coffee to give me a bowl of sweets and some bread. So it's kind of late afternoon tea, but just what I need to perk myself up. The river is swollen, so this tractor and the trailer is going to take our Datsun. It's going to take us to the um, river crossing. Steve's attempted to get it on now. I'm directing him. Christ. Well, he's on the trailer. Incredible. Now we've got to get across the river. Look at these rocks. It's like the setting from a western here. I hope it's a western with a happy ending. So, riding on the back of a motorbike, following the trailer, yeah. going to the river. Onwards, viewer. Viewer, that's the river I've got to cross. Um, we've got to cross. Quite fast flying and wide, actually. It's a motorbike we're just coming on. Absolutely freezing on the back of that bike. Here's, um, here's the trailer now. Viewers, this is absolutely terrifying. Look at this. This is what we're going across in. Oh my god. Well, we're not yet. It's more river, isn't uh, it? That's nothing. Okay, good. On the ARA's website, it says you must be prepared for wild camping. Well, viewers, it doesn't get any more wild than this. We're in the middle of nowhere. We had to stop the car because we can't continue at night in these conditions, so we've pitched our little tents in the middle, you know, just in the middle of nowhere. And um, tomorrow, hopefully in the light, we'll navigate our way to the Russian border and meet up with a rally. Good morning viewers, rally report, day 11. Well, we're not exactly on the rally, but we're trying to catch up with the rally. So we camped overnight last night, as you know, and we're following now a little pathway uh, between the mountains, which will hopefully lead to a town. We can have a spot of breakfast and then drive to the Russian border, get into Russia, and nearly civilization. We thought we had a bad day. Look at that car, viewers. Terrible. The real oh, car destroyer today. Naive. Another couple on the, on the truck. Exchanging it's a miserable face. Right, viewers, that is a welcome sight. We have now crossed the border. Well, one of the borders, there are two, civil and military. And we're now cruising down tarmac. Goodbye, Mongolia, rotted, horrible tracks, car destroyers. So, hello viewers, uh, back with you. I once saw a t-shirt that said, a good day on the piste is better than a bad day in the office. I suppose that's not strictly true if you uh, have a fall and you're paraplegic, but I kind of get the idea. And what I would say is a good day in a hotel is better than a bad day in a hotel is better than a good day camping. So I've decided to check out the campsite and get myself a little hotel room. What do you think? Not the most luxurious hotel I've ever had, but I'm, which is the most, what I'm most relieved at. Seven pounds a night, I've had a shower, had a little nap, gonna go out and buy some snacks, and then I'm gonna hit that bed. All the Russians have been cleared out of this cafe so that uh, Jan and uh, our friend can, can have this cafe to ourselves. This is lovely, what the sacrifices they've made. No more camping for these guys. They've jettisoned their camping gear, never to be seen again. I don't blame them. Day 12 of the rally and we're on the beautiful tarmac of the Russian Federation. Driving now from uh, Alta Republic to Aya. No tests for us, just straight from hotel to hotel. Get this car fixed up. Guys, kind of skating up the hill. How dangerous is that? Sadly, some cars are not making it under their own steam, but oh. on, uh, 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 on the trailers. This is the Aya Park Hotel, and uh, we've arrived here. I've just had a shower and a nap feeling a lot more refreshed and revived. Um, so I'll show you around. We're in a place, we're near Aya, a place called Cape Town, I think it's called. The cars are all here now. I'll show you some of them. That's the BMW, um, that's the SL. Great car, I just ask. How's the, how's the Merc going? Oh, great. Good. Probably nothing to do on a car like this. Nothing to do, lovely car. Mark II Jag, is it tough enough to do it? I'm not sure. A couple on the 
on the rally trying to find the love. Gone out for a romantic meal for two. See if you can guess which one it is. Viewers, here's my room. A little untidy, I know, but I'm sorting out all my stuff. It's not, a, you know, it's nothing special, but it is civilization. So nice to be back. So, my rally report for the today. We left the awful campsite this morning and drove on tarmac to here. Kind of slightly awkward because the bridge we wanted was kind of closed and we had to take a detour, but we actually got to the hotel. Car's making a bit of a bang noise when you go over about 60 miles an hour occasionally, which is disconcerting. So, hopefully we can get that fixed and hopefully we can get to Novo Sabrisk tomorrow and have a rest day. I think I need one. Morning viewers, another day, another driving day. Um, on the road today and we're driving to Novo Sabrisk. MTC in the cafe here. We're joining the staff of the ERA on this MTC. We were making good time tearing along at 80 miles an hour and now we're stationary. I don't know why. Big queue on the motorway. Probably an accident. Everyone's here. So, um, don't know what to do. Just had um, a nice little lunch in this kind of North style restaurant. We're entering Novo Zabrisk now, which is Russia's third largest city. With a big city comes a lot of traffic. So viewers, the saga continues. We pulled in to have a little wee and um, while Steve was putting on the handbrake, all the brakes on the car failed. So luckily we just buy a Porsche garage and I've gone and asked for a mechanic to help us. So hopefully they can. Are we lucky or unlucky? We've lost our brakes but we did it right outside a Porsche garage where they're helping us fix the car. So I'll keep you posted. How I wish I was doing the peaking to Paris in one of these bad boys. God comfort, luxury, performance, four-wheel drive, you could do it. Bananas! Do you have any bananas? Where are the bananas? <laughs> They're bananas! Great, thank you very much. It's okay, I just wanted them for the camera. She's videoing me and I'm videoing them. They're all here, look at them. Hundreds of them, that's the popularity of the rally. Pretty girls are out, the photographers are out. Wow, lovely. Right, girls and champagne for my reception at the Hilton, which is very thoughtful. Lovely. That's the corridor in my hotel. Now, I know you're a bit sick of hotels, but I just want to show you my room, uh, which is actually a suite. Um, and I've been upgraded to a suite because I've got um, Hilton kind of diamond membership. But I want to tell you, viewer, do not be mean with yourself. If you're watching this video and you're thinking about doing the P2P and you've got the money, treat yourself. It's hard rallying. You need these kind of breaks and these luxuries and a bath. Look, that's the first bath I've seen in days. Oh, wow. Massive shower. This is the life. I'm going to have a bath now. I'll take you around uh, Novo Zabrisk later. Viewers just had a lovely bath and washed my hair and everything. Anyway, it's rally report time. Where are we? So it's day 13. I've been on the road for day 13. How, how do I feel? Well, uh, I'm quite happy actually because I'm healthy and you know if I'm healthy I can cope with anything. But you know, let's look at things step by step. First of all the ERA, fantastic organisation, really really good, excellent people. Particularly Nikki Bannister and Kim, they do a great job and every one of the ERA is good. You know some organisations organise things, they don't, they don't do it properly, they do everything perfectly. Very good, 10 out of 10 for them. The actual rally itself, um, yeah I'm kind of enjoying it, I mean for me I, I didn't want to be a rally driver, you know, I want to drive Peking to Paris. If I didn't do another special stage in my life, it wouldn't bother me. I'm happy to cruise Peking to Paris, I just want to get there. There are two types of people on this rally. There's people like me who just want to do it. There are people who want to be rally drivers, want to be competitive, want to get good times. Steve's one of those types of people, and there are those types of people on this rally. Um, so I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the hotels, obviously, and uh, you know, I'm enjoying the whole sense of adventure. Stopping in little cafes and talking to people and everything. Not enjoyed the camping at all, uh, but I am enjoying the rally, yes, definitely. Um, now, to be honest, I'm not enjoying our car. It's really let us down. It's not Steve's fault, it's the preparer's fault, if you're watching this. I mean, the radiator was badly pinned, four holes, which resulted in a truck, the suspension failed. You ever spec that up, it's a wrong suspension. And then today the brakes failed, you know. I mean, we were driving in really, really heavy traffic uh, all day prior to the brakes failing, doing 70, 80 miles an hour with trucks and cars they were taking head on, necessitating heavy braking. The brakes had failed half an hour before they did, and they failed when we just pulled into a petrol station to stop. I wouldn't be making this video now, I'd be lying in a hospital bed, um, so, or dead. 
So, you know, safety is number one for me. So always prepare your car well if you're going to do P2P. Well, this is the new uh, Russia, isn't it? Uh, all the designer brands, Nova, Subursk. It's a very pleasant evening. I'm just walking from my hotel, the Hilton now, to the Marriott to have dinner and see how the rally's getting on. Back wheels came yeah. down as we went into the little tier. He pulled forward and he quit the bottom of the overdrive. Oh, fuck. It's a fantastic view of the city from up here. We've gone to the 10th floor restaurant and that's the Opera House. And if you just look down there, I'll zoom in for you viewers, see all those classic uh, Peak into Paris cars parked up. Lovely here. Look at the whole city. How much nicer is this than China? Wow, Putin's Russia has really come on. Look at the kind of decadence and affluence of the hotels. Didn't get this years ago, did you? No, not at all. It was grim and uh, they've kind of embraced capitalism, I suppose. Some people on the rally have opted out of the buffet and are ordering expensive food in this restaurant. Very nice, very buzzy here. Lovely. So, such as our status, the police have actually sealed off this whole area for the rally. So we can drive down the road unimpeded. We're just about to start, there's the Marriott, and we're leaving Novosibirsk and heading for Omsk. Novosibirsk and heading for Omsk. Look at this, dancing girls and everything, a band. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. First set of lights, ignore the no left turn sign. I don't know if it's here. No, no, you can't go here. 0.61, yeah, 2, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're obviously waiting for them. Yeah. On the tail of Paul Smith's uh, Mercedes 123 there, W123. Lovely. This is nice now, the open road. Hundreds of kilometres to do every day from Russian town to Russian town. So we drifted into Omsk and we left at 9 this morning and we got here about half past 5. Not a bad day. This is my rather dormitory, it's like a student accommodation here in the Ibis Hotel. But it, no, I'm not complaining, compared to camping, anything's great. So, rally reports, you know, because of the problems with the car, what we're doing is we're not doing the test, the sections where you drive very quickly, or as quickly as you can. We're just kind of cruising from hotel to hotel, which actually suits me. Um, but that's always an option. If you think of going on the rally, you kind of won't be, pe well, you're penalised a bit, but you still, you know, get a silver medal. You still have driven peak into Paris. So don't be too hard on yourselves or us for doing that. I mean, we've got to look after the car, that's priority one. And its occupants. And its occupants are priority one, the car's priority two. That's good. I don't know quite what it symbolises. Maybe an advert for something, but uh, it's impressive. Today has taken its toll. Well, I've left the bubble of the rally to show you something of Omsk. This is the river running through it. I don't know the name of it. If you know it, shout it out now. So it's not a you know, particularly pretty town, there's, there's some kind of greenery and things, but I don't know, it's uh, quite industrialised the towns, obviously some old buildings there. The people are happy and young people in the street are holding hands and yeah, it's a buzzy kind of place to be, Russia. It's a nice place to be. Another town, another start, the car park reverberates, the sounds of engines being fired up, the sound of petrol. Just, uh, you know, it's kind of tiring I'd say, tiring now, but we've got to keep going, we keep pushing on, we've got to get the next to the next hotel. Running in a little Mercedes convoy now, it's a bit of a dreary day but we're on the tarmac, and we're, on, we're on the main road, it's quite a long drive to uh, the next town but uh, it goes down by kilometre every time. Well I'm amazed it, I made it to another hotel. Um, uh, with all the things that are going wrong with the car, carburetor's out of balance, the back end's making a noise, the gearbox is still jumping. Just amazed we made it here. That's my goal. Every day we set off, I've got to get to the next hotel. Forget Paris, it's the next hotel. So I'm just going to have a little nap now, maybe I'll have a bath, and then dinner. And maybe I'll show you around town. The ERA guys all relaxing. Let me show you the view of our town, two men. Oh, it's nice. Pretty, kind of ugly architecture there, but it's a nice town. Chris, um, got a caller on line one. We want to ask you, how's the call? How, how's the rally going? It's going fantastic. Really glad you chose the Dyson. I guess. <laughs> there we are. That's, that's as enthusiastic as you get. 
by Martin and Martin in the classic Bentley. Yes. Um, how's your day been today? Bloody long, to be fair, because we had to, the rack cracked, the boot rack, and we had to call off uh, the main road to a farmer's little shed, and they welded it, kindly welded it up for us, so we're really good. But apart from that, how would you summarise the rally? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yes. Good. Have to think about it. All Russian cities must be built along the banks of great rivers and uh, the city, Tumen, I think that's how you pronounce it, is no exception. So it's quite pleasant here down by the river, quite green, some rather brutal architecture there. It's quite a kind of modern city, modern buildings and kind of, I don't know, it's got, it's got a kind of interesting feel to it. It's quite a nice city, prettier than Omsk. Anyway, now to dinner and then onwards to the next city. That house. Look at that house. It looks like something Dostoevsky would have stayed in. We haven't seen much of the old Russia on that trip. That's old Russia. Uh, He's been hit by a lorry. He's just telling the story. Jumping like this. So he went to, to, his, to his own side of the road. Mm -hmm. Then the truck has passed. Then he climbed uh, towards us. We passed it. And he hit it from our, he hit our back. And continued to our side of the bush. Well, it's very variable in Siberia. One minute it's quite warm, and the next it drops 10 degrees, and it's pouring with rain. Be wary of that. It's 10 to 3. Things are looking up. Just got into my hotel room, and it's kind of weird. It's nice. I like it. It's modern. Look at this big bed, and then bathroom over there. Kind of uh, nice. Nice. So we're in the town of Yekaterinburg today. Um, it was quite an easy drive. We went straight down the freeway because of our car. So that's the city. I'm going to go have some food. Haven't eaten. Then go shopping for a few essentials. So yeah, no, pleased to be here. Hotel to hotel suits me fine. I've managed to grab a few minutes with a very important man, Fred uh, Galler, who's the rally director. How do you feel kind of being the kind of, do you feel like the weight of responsibility on your shoulders or how does it feel being the organiser? Yeah, I do. I sort of explain to people that you, you've all got to worry I've, about I've the ordered. car. Okay. Yes, of course. I go back now live to Fred Gallagher. Fred, continue, please. Yeah. Uh, I always explain to people that you guys doing the rally, you've got one car to worry about and I've got about 105 cars <laughs> yes, to worry that's about. Right. So, uh, it must be a great job to have. It's a kind of dream job, isn't it, really, if you're into rallying? Yes, it is a dream job. I mean, it, 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 it has its tricky moments, of course, because one does feel like an enormous responsibility to make sure that all of you people, A, have a good time, B, have a fair sporting time. Well, I'm not sucking up. I mean, this is the truth. You, you guys, ERA, do a brilliant job. Well, do a very good job. To say so. It's true. Yeah, it's true. But we can't, we can't rest in those laurels. We have to, uh, we have to keep doing it yeah, as that's much right. as we possibly can. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, uh, Thanks, Fred. Keep it there. Hotel, that's the higher from the outside. So kind of all steel and glass around here. Look at this, very modern, very modern. I'm just going into town now, trying to find a rucksack and some clothes. That's a funny car, it's not on the rally. Don't know what car it is. I can go on a bit about hotels, but look at the lights there. And the lights by my bed, they're lovely. The lights on the floor. And look at this, look how funky this is. Look, wardrobe, it's all circular. This is a great room. I really like this room. I'm just gonna have a bath now, then I'm gonna have my nap. Russian girls with bread in this hotel. It's lovely here. Lovely. Hello. 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 Valley Report. What day is it today, Steve? Day? 18. Day 18. We're heading for a city called Perm in Russia. Look at the endless Siberian forest. And I must tell you about the weather. It's absolutely freezing. I've got my fleece on. I had to go out and buy a coat. Um, it's 11 degrees centigrade today. We expect it to be 27 very cold. I tell you something, if you're doing the B2B, pack plenty of different clothes. Do you know how to sum up my emotion now? Order. The monotony of driving through Russia day after day, the gas bomb stations. It's just monotonous. Anyway, you can only hope we get through it and get to somewhere more interesting. We've just got to keep going. KBO. Winston Churchill used to say. Another day, another Russian town, city. This is the city of Perm, and that's our hotel, the Hotel Ural, the Ural Hotel. So I'm about to go in and have a little nap. So when you arrive at every hotel, there's normally someone to clock on with, or, and there's someone from our handlers, 
Hello, do you want to say hello to everybody in England? Hello. Hello. And they sort out our accommodation and all the logistics. And what's your company? What company is it? Kyrgyz Concept. Kyrgyz Concept. Excellent. You do a very good job. Thank, Thank you. you. I thought I'd show you my new kind of military look. I had to, had to buy this coat because it's so cold here. It's only £12. Well, viewers, just had my nap. I went to bed at 2.30. Guess what time I woke up? 8.30. So I slept uh, six hours. Incredible. You know, it's so draining, the P2P. You need that kind of sleep. And now I'm going to go to bed again. I've just had some dinner. I'm going to go to bed, sleep. Hopefully that revived me. Hopefully it's not carbon monoxide poisoning. But um, if it is, bad news. But I think it's just tiredness. Just a really tough event. Just got to keep going. Good night, viewers. There's a new receptionist in the hotel. Very impressive. Look at that truck. Wow. That's uh, the wounded Hillman Hunter we're following. The suspension's not working, the car's kind of bouncing all around. Like us, they're going straight to Kazan, where we're deviating to go to the brink. Um, there they go. Six, we haven't seen that for quite a while. This is an A road across Russia. Not that pleasant though, we're bouncing along, we're doing, what speed are we doing? 35 miles an hour. 35 miles an hour, and every bump shakes our car and rattles it. We're about to do one of the tests, how do you feel? Believed to be doing a test. There you go. <laughs> Kazan Ring, it's actually a race circuit. So all the cars are here for, for the circuit. Are you looking forward to the ring? Yes, I know. <laughs> there we are, the Fangios, everything. They're all here. Guys on the scooters, all here for the test. My car is ailing, but still going. Steve's driving like a racing driver on the Kazan ring. We're coming up to a sharp left here. You can see the boards counting down. 250, 200, 150, 100. 50, we're on it now Steve, 90 left, there we go Vio, round this bend, let's hope he doesn't lose it, there we go, grip, fantastic, struggle for grip, <laughs> and round again. Another Russian city, and this time the city of Kazan, where it got a rest day, so I might go exploring it tomorrow, see what I can see, depending on how far we are away from everything. Another anonymous hotel room, it's like I'm on the run from the Mafia or something, isn't it? Um, anyway, another day, another room. Money kind of panels, nice. Very loud in our hotel. It's a bit like Vegas actually. We're going to the buffet now. It seems odd to name a function room in Russia after somebody trying to conquer them. Well, there you go. In the rest day, people will kind of work on their cars. Our car, of course, needs work. It's very smart uh, Bentley with the Germans in. Very smart, lovely car. Great choice to photograph everything around us. It's great. That's the mascot of Chestnut House Charity if you want to donate. One thing, one thing I haven't really shown you on this video is the 200 cars. Now these are kind of Russian fixers cars who joined us in Russia and they got old kind of, well, I don't know, don't know what kind of car it is, but old kind of Russian cars which are kind of slightly kind of American looking in a funny kind of way. But they join us, they're the 200 series cars. They're not kind of on the rally but they're they're with us through Russia. Aston Martin looking very clean. That'd be a lovely car once they de-rally it. More Russian cars. Lovely. It's a lot of anxious work on the Escort here. Former class leaders who had a snap joint or whatever, trying to get it back in the race. God, it's like half car, half box added to the back of it. Strange little car. One of my favorite little Russian cars. I'm joined now by Jill from Washington DC in the Porsche 356. Jill, let me ask you, how are you enjoying the rally? Oh, it's been tough. We've kind of been on our own rally since we get in late last almost every night. We have an issue with our rear suspension. It's actually at the Porsche dealer or garage now. Hopefully that'll rectify it and we won't be last again. Great. And can do the fun thing. See you tomorrow on the road. See you tomorrow on the road. I'm out and about being a tourist for you viewers with the other tourists and seeing something of Kazan. Nice city. Um, so, this is Kazan. It's nice. Nice. So, this is a pedestrianised area of Kazan. That's my 
pasta and coke in an outside restaurant. Nice to be away from the rally circus for a few minutes. This is lovely here, just wandering with the people and I feel like a tourist again. I don't know how many fish they've killed today. Um, anyway, this is like the heart of uh, Kazan here. The kind of um, Piccadilly Circus, if you like, in Kazan. Show you around. Some modern buildings, some interesting um, statues, some big old hotels. That's Kazan. Now by Scott from the good old US of A. Scott, how's the rally going? The rally's going quite nice. You enjoying it? I'm enjoying pieces of it. You're quite a competitive guy though, aren't you? Well, you know, I've been... I've been uh... Pro cyclist and everything? Yes. But do you think you've changed your competitive nature on this rally? Uh, it certainly has put me in, in touch with the reality of this particular competition. Yeah, it's a lot it's longer. Much harder than I thought. Oh, good. Well, let's hope you keep going. Cheers. Very Stalin-esque statues there, people throwing off the chains of bondage. I thought I'd show you our hotel from a distance. It's a bit of a monstrosity from a distance. There's an incredible audience around Steve now as he seals the bonnets of the Datsun for the last time for the night. Morning viewers, looks like a lovely day in Kazan. It's day 21 of the rally. So we're driving now to the city of Nizvi Novgorod. The uh, car's getting ready there, they're all cleaned. So hopefully it'll be a nice day, no test today, just following the road. So hopefully, another city, another hotel. You know that river is viewers? Shout it out if you think you know. Volga! Volga, that's right, it's the Volga River. Massive river stripping through Russia. We're ripping through Russia, things are looking up today. It's uh, sunny, we're on the road, gearbox is strapped up, Steve's strapped up. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we're joining the route of the rally because there's no difficult tests. Hopefully it's nice tarmac the whole way. It's Italians in the vintage car, cruising along. Those are my friends, Jan and Jonas, in their, in their lovely coupe, all the way from Sweden, on the road again today. We arrived in Nimvi Novgorod. This is Victory Park. These are probably the planes that created that victory. The Great Patriotic War. The uh, tourists are out waving. The AMC's here. Thanks on your left. Photographing me and I'm videoing them. We are goddamn celebrities. <laughs> Hello! I don't think you'll be needing those binoculars. <laughs> is that close? All here we are like, we are celebrities. We are famous. It's lovely. That's the new Russia bad taste gone bad. That's the view from the 10th floor of my hotel room. My hotel. Luckily I'm not uh, feeling suicidal. Um, anyway, those are all the rally cars down there. There are all the people buzzing around them, looking at them. It's quite an event when uh, the rally comes into town, I must say. We are celebrities. And those are the mighty, Vol that's the mighty Volga River in uh, in the city. There's a church and everything. Ninzi Novgorod. It's very hard to say that. Anyway, another Russian city, another day. Tomorrow, guess what? Another Russian city. That's our hotel from the outside, the Park Hotel. Don't think it's going to win any awards for um, architectural beauty. What would he have made of it all? Rich Westerners tearing through his country. I don't know what these Russian cars are. There's an incredible line of them. Look at those, they must have been real classics in their day in Russia. I'm joined now by Jill in the Mustang. Hi Jill. Oh, hi David. How are, are you enjoying the rally? Yes, well in places. It can be quite tiring at times and testing, but I am quite enjoying it. Tell me one thing, why yes. do you think so many Australians are here? Are you are kind of you know, disproportionately represented, I would say. Well, I mean, relative to the you know world population, I'm just saying there are a lot of Australians on the trip. I'm not, yeah. It's not a critical thing; it's a good thing. I'm just no, saying, why do you think? When you eat in the rally every night. It's another buffet. It's like being at a wedding, but I guess with no bride. Up bright and early on a very warm morning in Nizhny Novgorod. It's Sunday morning. Most Russians are heading to church, and our equivalent of church is a racing circuit, and we're heading there. We're in convoy now with a well-prepared Mercedes SL from the Netherlands. Our friends who had the lady in red at the previous speaking to Paris. In front of that, we just glimpse, we just glimpse another Mercedes SL. And in front of that, an SLC. Popular cars on this rally. 
So this is the uh, racetrack where we'll be racing. I'll show you that later, but today I want to focus a little bit on the cars. We haven't done that many cars, so I'm going to do it by type of cars. Now, first type is the 240Z. You're familiar with our car. You're not necessarily familiar with everyone else's car. This is another 240Z. This is actually from America. Uh, Chris and TJ. Chris, do you want to say hello to our viewers all around the world? You glad you bought the Z? Yes. There you go. Right you heard now it the there. the car is perfect. <laughs> exactly. No repairs at all. And then our Australian friends here, the very experienced financier Peter St. George and his fantastic racing driver David. Uh, very, very well prepared car. Rene and Eric's car from Belgium. Sometimes I walk towards this car thinking it's actually our car. It's only the number that uh, gives it away. It looks so similar. I might have showed you these cars before, but they're worth seeing again. The Alfa Romeo. All these guys are from Italy. Apparently some of them are ex-Formula One drivers. So they, they kind of form a little team of uh, Alphas there. Very nice, very sweet little cars. It's a very warm day today. How's your car inside? No way. Yeah, we must be wishing for the cold weather again. We are. <laughs> we tried all the insulation, but nothing's effective. Anyway, on you go. On we go. It's absolutely boiling today. So what I've done is given this man in the petrol station my very warm coat. He likes it. Yeah, I was saying, very long day today, kind of didn't really enjoy it. We were in a hot car for a long time, we left early, we did the tests. Uh, Steve and I were bickering a bit as our, you know, priorities don't really align on this rally. He wants to be competitive, I just want to get there in as comfortable way as possible. So there you go. But we're here now, so I can have a bath and I can relax. See you later. Nissan dead, yes, that's us. So it's day 31 viewers on the rally, leaving Maribor and heading for Ljubljana via some difficult tests. We're passing through some beautiful alpine kind of scenery here. Very, very pleasant drive. The only negative is it's actually a very warm day, It'll probably be in the 30s today. So, never mind, we soldier on with the goal of Paris as our destination. So I'm just looking at the racetrack that we did. Here we go, one of my favourite cars, Paul Smith's uh, Mercedes 123. See how he gets on. So, um, probably not the ideal car for running kind of very short circuit type term. Well, that is giving it a go. This is, this is Jerry driving. He doesn't mess about. We're all kind of queuing up now at a test section. Apparently there's been an accident. A fire engine has been called. Let's see what happens. Moving the cars now as the emergency vehicles come through. Watching here as the Italians manoeuvre their cars in the road. Rally report, day 32, drove to Ljubljana today, not a day I enjoyed at all, we were in a very hot car on twisty roads, driving very quickly, one of the cars has an accident, one of the competitors is in a hospital, it is in an ambulance on the way to hospital, so I didn't really enjoy it, there's a bit of a life lesson here viewer, don't let your life be dictated to by other people, whoever they may be, you take control of your life and do the things you want in your life and then you'll be happy, I didn't today and I was unhappy. I won't be doing it again. Following an English classic now, the old Ford Capri from the 1970s. Who'd have thought when it was bought that it would end up here many, many, many years later? That's Martin and Martin in what I term the classic Bentley. It does look more like a vintage car, but because of its age, it's been put in the classic section. Anyway, the nice guys, Martin and Martin. Another day, another country. This time it's the turn of Italy to experience the rally. Fortunately, it's raining. The 
look at this view, it's 1.30 in the afternoon, it's like the middle of the night, it's so dark, how the weather can change. Basic lunch on the canvas for our rallyists today, nothing exotic, oh, yeah, Parmahan yeah, and yeah, breadsticks. Yeah. It's a tough rally to survive. Paul, nice to see you back. Not a rally car, but a lovely, lovely Alfa Romeo. Look at the clouds and the hills and everything. It's a bit uh, miserable here today. That's the engine of the Mustang. To our viewers who don't know, what size engine is that? It's a 302. 302 V8, there we are. Well prepared car with a good driver and a relaxed. Thank you very much. No problem. And a relaxed co driver. Yeah. Number 40, how's your car going? Perfecto. Perfecto. I don't think he speaks over good English, but uh, hopefully okay. that car's going quite well. It's all jacked up. <laughs> this is a lovely one. Some lovely old cars here. A bit of a part of the atmosphere in this Italian ski resort as the rally is rolling to town. They haven't seen anything like it since 2013. So the, uh, the mountains and the clouds, I think it's going to rain actually, but lovely ski station. And this is where the, all the rally cars come in at the end of the day and they get their time. That's what we did a little while ago. Mercedes, has, be Mercedes has been damaged. You hit something. Tell me what happened. Hit the opposite side. Tell me what happened. Who, well, who did you hit? Well, I turned. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and this thing? Yeah. Go to the opposite side. Oh no, yeah, he slid into a corner. Was he okay? You hit the corner? Yeah, hit the corner. Oh my god. Wow. There you are, viewer, drive Luckily, carefully. Some cars choose to operate with only one windscreen <laughs> wiper. <laughs> we're going to Paul, the, how's it going? We're not going to go to the buffet. We're going to eat somewhere locally, but we're going to meet. Some of the rallyists make a change from a buffet and partake of pasta and pizza in a local Italian restaurant. That's the view from my balcony this morning. San Marino di Castrosa. Nice. Nice place. Shame we've got to leave. Now on a test section in Italy, the test sections in Europe are actually run on the public roads, albeit closed to the police by the police, but here we have kind of drops and guardrails and stone walls, uh, so they have tried to limit the time to increase the safety level. It's a beautiful day today in Italy in the Dolomites, but it's always an eventful rally for us. The throttle has just kind of stopped and uh, Steve's trying to work out what it is. Now the video can't really capture this view, but this scenery into the valley, the mountains, is absolutely spectacular. Look at that stretching off into the distance. Oh, just as we come to the beautiful. corner, you'll catch it, really. Look at this view, fantastic. There's the huff. That car's taken a bit of a beating, hasn't it, viewers? Wouldn't let that man hire a car. This must be one of the most incredible views on the rally. The lake, the mountains, those houses. Just gorgeous here. <laughs> another day, another country. We're in the beautiful Switzerland now, We're heading for San Moritz at the Kapinski Hotel. Come with me. I don't know if you can see that by the side of the road. We've had a lot of sand in the Gobi, and now we've got snow in Switzerland. There we are, snow by the side of the road. Wow. Paris, well done, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Super. Yeah. They've got some of the beauty tent. <laughs> 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 Just arrived at the Kapinski, not that impressed really, you know, it might be a luxury hotel but our room's not that great, I've just had to separate these two beds. Look at all these kind of things and, and the eaves, it's not a great room at all, for the price the ERA must be paying, you know, it's not that good, it might be nice downstairs, disappointing, is uh, what I would say, at least there's a bath. Um, anyway, I suppose we'll make do, I'll go and show you downstairs. So this is the Kapinski for real downstairs. I guess it's pleasant enough. A lot of the rallyists are arriving now and checking in. So pleased to be in San Moritz, really. A bit disappointed with my hotel room, but you know, it's like getting to Paris. It's lovely here. I went skiing here and I've actually gambled in the casino in the Kapinski previously. It's probably more impressive from the outside than from the inside in a way, this hotel. Well, there you go. Such is life. Another day, another hotel. I'll tell you something for you, I'm counting down the days now to the end. The Swiss car is literally flying the flag, but they receive special attention here. Tell our viewers your name. They don't know. And how long have you been with the rally? When did you join it? When? Friday. 
from the Lissages. Wow. And then you're presumably leaving it in Paris. Yes. How has it been? Great. Thanks a lot for all your support. So we've left the the bubble of the rally once again to come and explore Samaritz. Look at the snow on the mountains. Look at the Bedrews Palace. That was closed last time I was here, so I'm going to come and check it out. Not for myself, but for you, viewer. Day 34 of the rally. We drive from Samaritz to Lucerne. But look at that, viewers. The weather is coming in. The pass we were meant to take is closed because of snow. And we're taking an alternative pass. I'll tell you something, it's very cold here. <laughs> so he's got his little fleecy jacket, his little padded jacket on. It's cold. We're up at 2,200 metres. Look at the snow around here. Christ. We're in what I call now a rally convoy. Not a very noisy, you'll be able to see as we turn the corner. There we are. You can see the Italians and the... Steve, what's that coming from, the lead one? The lead one is the sun. Sunbeam. But what you'll be able to do is hear that, <laughs> that, that BMW. It's the noisiest car on the rally. Ah, there we go. There we go, we're going faster. There we go. That's the Sunbeam and even that's the Alpha. There we go, viewer. Look at this, viewer. Look at these roads going down the pass. Oh my god, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Incredible to be in Switzerland. <laughs> It's perfect weather for open top motoring and I've come across a couple who like open top motoring. <laughs> That's right, you got the ears. It's just a mental of dressing different than just this gentleman here. There you go, compare and contrast viewers. So we're in Switzerland at 2,300 metres. We just stopped for a little sandwich. Look at the views here, it's just absolutely incredible. This is worth coming on the rally for alone. Some of the rallyists have become so close, they're posing for romantic photos and they decided to leave their partners behind. <laughs> so that's the town of Verbier down there where I've been skiing and we've just been right to the top on a little bumpy track. Quite unpleasant actually. Chasing down now, Doug and his Mark II Jag. There he goes. There he goes, we'll see him now. No, this is not the sea, this is the lake. This is the lake at Lucerne. That's where we are. So our hotel's in Lucerne, and this is a, if you know Lucerne, uh, it's an incredibly large lake. Incredible, like a mini sea, really. But anyway, it's nice as a uh, kind of post uh, rally fever, I suppose. You know, we've done the last of our tests today, so tomorrow's just hopefully driving to France, and the next day, hopefully driving into Paris. That's our hotel in the background there. That's a better view of the lake. Incredible, really nice here. This is a better view. Look at that. Look at the size of the lake, the mountains in the background. It's absolutely gorgeous here. Look at these the lovely hotels. Look at the old hotels. I know it got on about hotels, but look at that by the lake. Wish I was staying there. That's nice. Lovely, it's like a little castle by the lake. Look at that car. What's he hit? Some people are in their bath or their bedroom. Some people are sitting on the floor fixing their car. Well, I can tell you what this kind of person Matt is. Matt, what are you up to? This is the first time in 34 days I've had to fix anything. <laughs> what? Here I am. Yeah, that's right. You can see his dedication, viewer. Yes, just adjusting wheel bearings. Morning, viewers. It's day... What day is it? Day 35. Day 35. So that means there's two more days to go. Today we drive from Lucerne to Rems in France, and then tomorrow, hopefully, we drive into Paris. So all the kind of competition is over now, so we got a final place. We came 37th out of the 57 classic cars, which isn't too bad for a kind of amateur like us. But it's not really about the placing, it's about uh, enjoying it and getting to Paris, and um, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying myself now. Um, so next stop breakfast and then we leave this hotel and on to another city. Come with me. Glorious view from the window, it's a nice sunny morning. All the cars are getting prepped and uh, ready to go. Driving, that's right, to another Russian city today, to driving to Smolensk today. Looks very warm, so uh, let's hope it's not too long a drive for us. Had a fantastic first two weeks and then suddenly everything's gone wrong. What's happened? The uh, the gearbox backed up, so we had to uh, 
find a new gearbox in Russia. How, where do you find it? Well, we went to, some Russians went on to a Russian eBay for us. They found a similar <laughs> gearbox, bought that, brought it back, made one good gearbox out of the two, but the input chart was wrong, which meant that we then had to change the clutch on the studio maker. <laughs> so we did all that, got it sorted out. Whilst they were doing that, uh, they overhauled the water pump for us, which meant the machining a new shaft, which was machining, keyways, locked in, complicated job, all done, everything done in 40 hours. We set off, great. The next day, bloody water pump shaft here, Saturday afternoon, in some remote Russian village. The car was immobile again, so we sorted out, anyway, to cut a long story short, we found somebody that machined us a new shaft, uh, with a new keyway, we rebuilt the water pump. Yeah. Fantastic, we got off on that, that was brilliant. So we thought, when we finally got to the hotel, we thought, well, the problems were over there, we ordered it. <laughs> so, yesterday morning, Paul checked the car, and he discovered these crack, hairline cracks in the wheels, which is not a good thing. No. So, we had a dodgy spare, which had previously been welded, so we put that on, and then got on with the day. Got to the circuit for the first test. First hairpin bends, <laughs> the wheel gave it up, it came, it was stripped off over the wheel nuts, completely came off, the car collapsed out, off the track. Oh the God, the so is there, is there a moral here? That's when it gets worse. Buy a Mercedes. <laughs> don't do the tests, viewers, don't do the tests. So, so we put the dodgy crack spear on and limped off the circuit to get back to the paddock. When there was one car left in our group, we had two spares, and the wheel nuts on his spare fitted our pattern. So he kindly lent us a spare wheel, so we got three of our own wheels and one stranger's wheel on our car. So then we set off trying to find some new wheels. We went everywhere yesterday. There is not a wheel in Russia with our wheel pattern, so we're now considering what we're going to do. So we had a okay. strategic meeting last night, We've got another studio baker at home, they've taken the world on that, they've hired to them, could get them shipped out here. Wow! Are going to wait here? No, 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 it'll be a couple of days down. Oh, you're going to try and get to the next yeah. yeah, yeah. And then off oh, oh, this other car, which are really strong. Oh, okay. good. Get them shipped out. Okay. So all right, Richard. Well, good luck with that. Let's hope well, we see. Listen, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. So yeah, came... but we've only got so much time on the memory cards. <laughs> we came down to the car this morning. We started up. There was just two things. The bloody water pumps cracked in the Oh no! What do you do? You can't drive for any distance in Russia without seeing a great body of water, and this is no exception. That our bridge is taking us across. I don't know what it is, but uh, someone's having fun on a jet ski over there. At least we're not fording it in a tractor. Do you remember that, viewers? <laughs> Do you remember how sunny it was this morning? Well, we've actually had to pull off into a petrol station because the rain is so bad. You can't drive it more than about 10 miles an hour. So, uh, and that's where the windscreen wipers on full. Hey, <laughs> viewers, the weather is pretty bad for us. How bad do you think it is for these guys? Have a look. <laughs> Number seven, they seem quite cheerful. Coming into tight bends now on the racetrack. Around we go. Another racetrack for you. Oh, I know it's probably a bit boring, but I'll try and catch some of the other cars. There's the escort catching us up. Look, that's a, that's a real racing driver. That's Nigel and his escort. That's Wee, a bit twitchy, Nigel. Oh, yes, that's right. We're following him. Whoa. Hope we don't see him lose it. Racing lines, racing lines. There we go. You want to uh, sign up for the P2P? You can do this, Mio. For these guys with their headsets and their leopard skin oh, coats. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Smolensk Hotel. You can probably guess what city that's in, Smolensk. And these are the cars kind of coming in now. It's a bit of a funny old car park here. It's a bit kind of rough and ready. There you go. In fact, you remember the other day and I was showing you all the dancers? This is the one I didn't show you. I call this the Pickering Dancer. It's driven by Mark Pickering. It's a very well prepared car. He's a kind of rally driver. He's currently leading the classics. So, um, lovely car, I suppose, if you like that kind of thing. This is my little room. That's a um, fridge. It's not plugged in. And uh, this is the main bit of the room. What a contrast from yesterday's room. Even so, better than camping. And then a good view out on all the cars. All those cars lined up. The rally continues. 
Real mix of kind of old and new, isn't it, Russia? Like that truck, all camouflaged. A big Soviet star and flags and old buildings. We're just walking around Smolensk now and out with the normal people, leaving the bubble of the rally and trying to find a restaurant. We nipped out to a restaurant and we've ended up with a buffet. Look at all this for you. Guess how much that costs? Shout it out in sterling. £4.25, a starter, a main course, a dessert, a drink. Can't go wrong with that. Are you pleased with the pro with the food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Great. Very good. Road viewer. Look at that fantastic church there. Imagine that in communist Russia. Wow. The check Never in, and it's actually about <laughs> ten past nine now. These are the keys of the cars that never made it to the hotel. They are Imagine right at your still. back. Hey! We're in a new country today. Hooray! We're in Belarus. Goodbye, Mother Russia. Hello, Belarus. It doesn't look very different. Uh, just going to go and uh, change up some money. I'm just going to. We're all kind of waiting to be let go in the petrol station, and I'm just going to show you some cars now. So the first car, uh, type, oh, I'm going to do this by car type. Might be a bit boring for people who are not into cars, but if you're not into cars, you shouldn't be watching the video. It's the SL. It's a very well prepared SL, the red one, lady in red. It's a lovely car, uh, I'll tell you services. I like this car a lot. So then the other car, yeah, another Mercedes SL, that's a Pagoda, driven by the sleeps. Hashtag always asleep at the wheel. Um, nice little car, let's ask, want you to... I'm videoing the rally and I'm videoing all the SLs. What do you think of your SL? It's the best SL. What? It's the best one. The best one. There you are. You heard it live there. I think this is the car that had problems. It took ages joining us. The Mercedes SLC. Not quite an SL. It's a little bit longer than the SL. I like this car. 450. Nice car. A doppelganger for the last one. Another SLC. But that's the um, Australians. I like, I like the Australians. Guys, they're nice. They're cool. Yeah, look at those little louves and everything. It's lovely inside that car. Look at the tinted windows. It's lovely interior. I like that car. Roof scoop. It's running very well, that car. This is another Pagoda Mercedes, driven by, I think we call him Tall Tom. And it's normally around the same time as us. Tom, I'm just videoing all the Mercedes SLs. Tell me, what, what do you think of yours? Do you like it? This car? Yeah. It's a great car. Good. I love it. Great. It's a strong car. Good. And so, it's been running well, has it? Yeah. Good. But we were on the truck. Ah. But the sole reason to be on the truck was myself. Ah, okay. So I tried to ruin it. Ah, okay. At the end of the day, it worked. Okay. Back, back, you know, I love them. It's always sad to see a car in the back of a truck. And it's our friend Dana, her 911. It hasn't run that well in this event. No criticism, but I'm just saying they've had problems. And they're trucking it to Poland. Looking at now a very rare or unique car, the Bristol 403. So what engine has this got in it? It's got a two litre, lovely, three wall BMW engine. Right. Yeah. How many brake horsepower? 85 brake horsepower. 85. And what Seven is it? and a half compression. Wow. And, a half and what can he cruise at then? What kind of speed? It's 120. Nice. Wow, that's, that's perfect for the rally, isn't it? Yeah. Steady and reliable. Yeah. Lovely car. Yeah. So our first impressions of Belarus are favourable, empty motorways. I must remind you that this is one of the least free, the least free country in Europe in terms of fresh freedom, and uh, it's quite a strictly regulated police state with most people working for the state. So it's not quite the panacea it seems. Jackson is parked up. We are travellers on the road today. We stopped at our first little cafe in Belarus uh, for a little tea and a cake. It's very quiet here. There's like hardly any people. But the population of Belarus is about nine and a half million uh, for a country one and a half times the size of Italy. And Italy has a population of 60 million, so it's quite sparsely populated. Anyway, back to my tea. Look at the difference in the sky. Look over there, it's all fluffy clouds, blue sky. And look over there, it's like biblical storms are coming down. We've arrived in Minsk and another hotel. Look at that, the Renaissance Hotel. That's a fantastic, lovely, big hotel. Can't wait to see my room. So, another SL that I forgot to add is car 96, Isabel and Nikki. Hi, girls. Hi. How's the car going? She's all right. Good, looks very nice. I like it in silver. Uh, you know I like uh, Mercedes. Lovely car, lovely car, lovely crew. Just thought I'd show you a little France car number two. Do you remember that at the start? It was kind of struggling to start. Oh, it's made it all the way here. It's a real testament to its owner. It works on it so hard, so hard. 
another yes. night, another another dining room full of round tables. It's like we attend a wedding every evening. <laughs> Lucky for us, the company is good. Day 25, we're still in Belarus, we're heading for the direction of Brest now. And as you can see, these roads through the countryside generally are quite flat, quite straight, quite deserted. So we've made it to the what's called the TC, a time control, and uncharacteristically it's in a lovely place. Look at this lovely building and we're going to go for lunch. The sun is out, everything's good. So it's a very convivial spot for lunch today. The, the TC is just here and we've got tables outside, we're just having our lunch. Soup. I'm debate over the bill here on how many pancakes people have consumed. <laughs> So there's a different category of car on the rally, and these are called the coupes. They're Chevys and they're Ford Fangio coupes. Do you like it? It's great. Good. Tough. Tough. Oh, oh no, no, but it's not about a few seconds here or there, this rally, is it? It's about... No, it's about if you're half an hour in front of Mongolia. That's right, really yeah. We're not half an hour in front of Mongolia. Yeah, no. So that's one. That's the one Steve likes, the Hoth. They're all very similar. I don't really know this type of car to... There's another one, but I, I, you know they're all a bit kind of identical to me. I don't know the difference between them. I'm just showing you them as a classification of car. There's another one. There's another one. I know it's a bit boring, but um, there's the one that rolled. You can see it's all been patched up. That's the kind of um, quite an aggressive one. Uh, anyway, you, you get the idea doing it. There, there's another one, our American friends in another coupe there, lovely. Everybody from Belarus, <laughs> what we see here is just amazing. I wish you good luck. Hello good everybody, hi. Thanks yes. a lot. I love Belarus, it's so clean and nice and okay, proper. Good. Lovely. Good luck to you. Look at that view, that is absolutely magnificent. Look at those, the gold and everything. That is incredible. Look, lovely. We've selected one child, only one from the audience who's got the joy of driving the car. Start it up. Start it up. Steve is so nice, I wouldn't have let that child in, but he did. The, everyone's here. There's adulation here at our arrival. Never had this much excitement in Belarus since it was liberated. Interviewed by a crew from uh, TV here. Tell me, what, where are you from? What TV station are you from? Uh, it's a uh, TV station called Great! So we're going to be celebrities in Belarus, are we? He's filming me, I'm filming him. I'm filming the whole rally so you'll be able to see this on YouTube if you want to. Thank you. Great, great. We're checking out the uh, rest of the world. We've got family here, we've come across from the Second World War. Hello, guys. <laughs> it inspires me to have a go. They're here, they're actually equipping girls for the Russian army. <laughs> I want to serve with this girl. Yes, we can be we can be majors together. Good. Uh, and there's me in my in my in my. I look a bit dad's army actually, unfortunately. But there you go. Never mind. Don't panic. Steve's there. He's joined the medical corps. Do you want, do you want, um, there we are. Just just photograph. Do you need to press anything? No, that's it. It's recording. So oh, it we is. Joined the Russian military. See if we're ready to fight for this country. That's it. Tell me if it's still on. Here are the tanks that liberated Belarus in the Second World War. We never would have won it without the Soviets. The site is actually colossal. The representation is bigger. It's absolutely huge here. Unbelievable. That celebrity status is actually very hard to get out. Very hard to get out, and that girl with the red hat is now leading us through the crowds like Moses parting the Red Sea. There they move, they move out of the way of the children. There we are, let's hear it. Thank you. That's the corridor in our hotel. When we pulled up outside, Steve said that our hotel's been condemned. Well, perhaps it should be. We alternate between luxury, the Hyatt, the Edwardian Redison, and old style Soviet era hotels. But I'm not going to complain about it, remember camping. So that's my little bathroom, uh, and that's my little bedroom. I actually paid extra to get this room. I think I paid an extra £30. Well worth it. The long line of cars, the interminable wait for the bureaucrats to process our paperwork at the border. 
despite special treatment, still going to take a long time. Some competitors are trying to save petrol and pushing yeah. their cars all the way to Poland. <laughs> the Dutch are all Imagine viewers being cozied up in here for 36 days yes. with our big wheel and those little instruments and everything. How is it going, guys? We've been okay. Yes, we have. Uh, we're, been, surviving. we're surviving. Any arguments? Well, it's welcome to Poland. We're in Poland. Quite a rough road. Long time ago since I was first here, 1989. Just about a month after the wall came down. So nice to be back. So we're on the road in Poland. Steve, do you want to tell our viewers what's the situation with the car? Uh, I think that the rear shocks have gone again. So how long did they last, one set of shocks? First lot, two days in uh, Mongolia. Okay, well let's go for lunch anyway. We arrived into the reception of a rather swanky, trendy looking looking hotel. What do you think of the hotel? I think it's a lot cleaner than we are. After, uh, <laughs> That's right. And, uh, it's a lot Mongolia nicer than the last China. one. <laughs> I'm joined now by Karolina. Do you want to say hello from Poland? Hello say so from say Poland. something in Polish. Polish? Yeah. Polish. Okay, thanks Karolina. Bye now. Bye. They're grinding and the welding, these mechanics, they keep these cars going, unbelievably. So viewers, it's day 26 of the rally. Can you believe that? We've been on the road for 26 days. It's amazing. Anyway, amazing is one word for it. Um, so now we're in Poland, which seems like civilization compared to everywhere else we've been. It's uh, shopping centres and toilets and restaurants. We've had a leisurely day, followed the tom-tom, stopped for lunch. The only problem is, another problem with the cars, there's some crack in the drive shaft or whatever. So we don't even know if the car's good enough to continue the rally. Suspension problems with the car, the gearbox problems with the car. So, uh, I really don't know if we'll continue. I hope we do. I hope we do. I want to just kind of get to the next hotel. But um, I'll let you know how we get on. So, day 26 of the rally. It's a fantastic view from hotel reception. Look at that lovely, lovely old building and that kind of monument there. Fantastic. What a welcome, or what a send-off. This is the old town hall. This is a kind of an arch we're going to drive through to be sent away from Poland. This is quite incredible. A lot of people here and um, it's all kind of happening. Wow. Porsche 356 is the last car, or one of the last, so that'll be the first to leave. They always kind of do it in reverse order. <laughs> what do you think of the Datsun? The Datsun is a very, very nice car. You can have it. We have a lot of sun. So, we've taken a break for a while, but we're back. We're back on the test circuit, and Steve's driving now. We're straight on for 1K. No instru I give the navigation instructions and there are none here, so I count down the distances, he's straight on for 1k. Look, there are marshals and fire extinguishers and ambulances at the ready. So we're straight on here for 750 meters. The road is closed to other traffic, so we can drive as fast as is safe. Arrived at a kind of nice hotel, there's tea and cakes here. But such is the pace of the rally, we literally only have 12 minutes to wait, so puts us under kind of pressure the whole time. So, rather report, day 27, we have crossed the border from Poland into Slovakia. It's not really a border now because of the EU, but we are in a different country and we're in the land of the Euro. So we're following the uh, navigations of the rally and we're doing the test today, so we're kind of back on. Little witch there. We're about to do another test section. It's not reassuring for me to see the fire brigade and the ambulance service. <laughs> Clapping and cheering our very arrival to brighten their rives. The girls are out, the sun is out. It's lovely here. Technically the MCC, but that doesn't matter. What matters is adulation. I love adulation. I want it in my normal life. If you see me, viewers, on the street, just start clapping me. You must be a bit sick of this by now. Another day, another hotel room. But today we had a good day in the rally, we did the tests, we haven't destroyed the car. And uh, it's a lovely city, I think it's Košice, it's in uh, Slovakia. It's a nice city, I might go and have to take a walk around it later, but I'm going to have a cup of tea, a little cookie, and then my bath. See you later. Just had a lovely bath, and listening to the weight playing. Wow, it doesn't get any better than this, it's a great way to relax. This is literally the calm after the storm, after the rally stormed into town. This is a medieval centre of the town. 
I feel like a normal tourist escaping from the bubble of the rally. Just want to make a political point, if I may. We voted recently, a few days ago, for Brexit. These are the people we're leaving behind, the Slovenians. The, uh, we're leaving behind the EU. We're leaving behind this young, vibrant, exciting nation. Shame on you who voted for it. About to go to bed, just thought I'd uh, check in. Just to say I had a very pleasant evening tonight in the restaurant with Paul Smith from Australia, W123 driver. Really nice guy, just wanted to kind of shout out to him. Hello Paul, if you're watching this. Very nice guy and uh, that's the thing about the rally, you meet some very interesting people. Well worth coming on the rally just for that. Good night viewers, I'm off to bed now. I'm joined now by the boys in the what I call the Escort Telegraph, or Telegraph Escort. Motorsport can be incredibly dangerous and they have rolled their car. Do you want to tell our viewers what happened? Why did you roll your car? It wasn't a roll. It wasn't a roll. Just put it inside. Oh, you just put it inside. What about the fire? Is that true? The fire? Well, have a look. Have a look, viewers. Wow. So they didn't have a fire. Why do you have a fire? A bit chilly. The what? It was a bit chilly. <laughs> oh, God. There you go. They're trying to fix it. It's probably annoying me videoing them. I'll leave them to it. But just want to say, viewers, motorsport can be dangerous. On the outskirts of Budapest, and we've come to the uh, town hall. We've got lunch arranged. Wherever we go, thousands of people turn up. <laughs> That's a view of Budapest, Hungary. This is a view of my hotel room in the Sofitel. Paid extra to have my own little room. And it's quite nice. Nice hotel, I'll show you around in a minute. Uh, Steve and the rest of the rally are staying in the Kapinski, uh, which looks nicer actually. But um, never mind, going to have a bath, a cup of tea, and uh, try and relax. There's the view from the floor of my hotel, looking down into the kind of atrium area. I wonder how many suicides there have been. So I'm in the room that was intended for Steve and I in the Kapinski, which is actually a much nicer room than mine. He's got a sofa and everything. It's a much, much, much nicer room. This, I hope you're watching this from the Sofitel. It's a much nicer room. Anyway, I've got my own room. I didn't know how it was going to pan out, so there you go. This is a lovely hotel, the Kapinski. If you're in Budapest, come and stay in this hotel. It's much nicer than the Sofitel that I'm in. But um, there you go, it's a lovely hotel. Budapest by night, this is a big square I have to walk through to get to my hotel. Very nice, it's lovely here, really nice city. Kind of such a vibe and it's pleasant and it's warm. Nice place to come to. Good to see that Britain still has a presence. around in Budapest, lovely to see the river and the chain bridge and the buildings on the hill. This is an incredible city, really really nice. If you're on the rally, take time to see it, don't be sat in the garage. Viewers, I know you're a bit sick of hotels, but we've come into the Four Seasons to have lunch. I just want to show you, it's absolutely magnificent. Look at that chandelier, it's so old and new. They've, they've taken the old Gresham building from the turn of the century, they've turned it into a lovely hotel. This is, this is, this is fantastic. Looking now at the river that divides the city into two, the Buda side, the Pest side. Absolutely spectacular city. Much, much more impressive than I thought Budapest. It's nice for once in the rally to kind of stop at a place and really appreciate it and take it in. Look at that incredible facade. It's just a lovely building. Yeah. That's the Four Seasons. Incredible. Another impressive building. Come to Budapest for you. It's a fantastic city. We're coming off the road now. Good morning viewers, it's day 30 of the rally. We are leaving Hungary, Budapest, and going on to Slovenia and driving to Maribor, where I've been before actually when I was skiing there. So it's a blisteringly hot day today. In this car it must be 30 degrees centigrade. People are combusting. So I uh, just thank your lucky stars you're watching from this from the comfort of your home. Even hardcore rallyists need to take a break. And for this break, we've chosen a restaurant just overlooking Lake Balaton. Look at the size of it. It's almost kind of um, volcanic, isn't it? Isn't it? There's a nice cool breeze coming from it. Bet you wish you were here, viewer. Come back to Maribor. Welcome to Maribor. Thank you. <laughs> so in the morning, every morning, we have to get our little time card stamped, kind of electronically. And that's the time we leave, and then they calculate the time we do in the day. So this is what they call an MTC, the main control time. This is the last book one. 
lovely sunny morning in Switzerland. We're saying goodbye to Lucerne and Lake Geneva and hopefully we're saying hello to Arts. It's a very difficult city to pronounce. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it very poorly, but uh, we're not on the route book today. We're on the sat nav. So, it's a relaxed mood in the car, Steve. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Now, a, always a, uh, there's always an Italian around us. Stopped in a perfect little French village here for a little cup of coffee and a uh, cake uh, as we wind our way through France to Reims. Here we are then in the centre of Reims. The rally cars have parked up, the spectators, people are actually cleaning their cars. Lovely, lovely. The spectators are here. People are trying to park. This morning I showed you where we stamped our card. You see that little blue device around his neck? That stamps the card when they arrive. So they're meant to arrive here. This is the MTC. We've arrived, but not all the cars have arrived. The rally's, um, the rally's ending up now, Nikki. How do you think it's gone, seriously? Oh, well, it's been nearly in Paris now, so I mean, like I say, it's been absolutely fantastic. Every day has been a Good, you did a great job of sorting out the hotels. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and it's all over tomorrow, and I'll say goodbye to all of you. <laughs> it's very convivial now. There's a real end of term spirit amongst the rallyists as we sit outside for champagne and dinner. So one of the Italians has started speaking now. He's got his pink trousers on and everything. Can you see that? Anybody got any idea what he's going on about? No. Check out those pink trousers. That. Is that attached to the magnet? How is he doing that? Look at that stick moving about. That is absolutely incredible. That guy could be like a Jedi Knight. Wow. Big cigars are coming out tonight. We're now by Paul Smith in the W123. Paul, how's it going? You had a period when you were on your own. Who are you with now? I'm with my dear son, Liv, who's joined me today. One day. How do you get on with the tulips? Can you work them out? It wasn't too bad. We got here. There we go. We're that's here. The, that's the spirit. Well, welcome to the run. We're on time, so that's the main thing. See you later. <laughs> Two normal people, tourists. They're not actually on the rally. What do you think of the cars in the rally? We just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Great. It's nice to meet you both. Yeah, thank you, David. You Maybe you'll do a rally one day. <laughs> Good luck. Today we drive to Paris. Come with me. Solidarity with Nice. Excellent. The competitors have done this themselves. It's not random or graffiti. This is where are you off to today? Where are we off to? We're off to Paris. Wow. The final you... day. The final day. What do you think? What are your feelings? What's the good and what's the bad of the rally? Well, I'm still not there, so hopefully we get there. Good part of the rally's got to be the people. Yeah. Uh, bad part of the rally. Where do I start? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the weather's quite tough. Uh, not knowing about the car, day to day getting in it and hoping for the best, but not knowing. Yeah, but that's... all in all, fantastic. Well, you're nearly there. We'll yes. see you there, I hope. Fantastic. There's Martin and Martin who battled the weather, and now they're battling one final time to try and get to Paris. There's Heather back from her troubles, and we'll see her in Paris. Hi, you looking forward to Paris? Yeah. <laughs> You've had a tough rally. How's it going? It's going good. Good. Well, Glad to be done, glad to meet to see my wife in three hours. We all feel like that, the end, the yes. end. Dana, of your car and bring... Briefly though, Dana, you departed from the rally with your car. Tell us briefly what happened to it. Oh, absolutely, everything was perfect, except the navigator talked too much. <laughs> <laughs> Cars are lining up now to drive through that arch and say goodbye to this city and say hello to the City of Lights, Paris. So, um, it's the Merc, the Alpha, the Sleep, then us. Okay. Tell our viewers where you're off to. We're off to Calais, where are you going? <laughs> Paris. <laughs> Rally report, final day on the way to Paris. Now I know this doesn't look like Paris for you, but the rally route never just takes you from A to B like Satnav does by the quickest, easiest route. They take you down the little twisty, turny routes where you have to check in and navigate. The rally's not about making it easy, it's about being an endurance. Oh, yeah. Martin, how do you feel? You just arrived in Paris. I, I know you're not quite the finish. I was looking forward to a nice, leisurely jaunt this morning. <laughs> and it's been the trip from hell. I think I've done it in my life. Well, ours are lined up now for the final push to the Place Vendôme. 
Are you excited? Are you excited? Say hello. hello. Say hello to a million viewers. Sick Bentley, the AMC. So the the Lebanese Porsche made it against the odds. Hit by the lorry in Russia, still here. Tell it us something about your rally. This car, it have won the fastest car of the rally. Really? Per horsepower. Wow. Per horsepower. The Gunter's Mustang is all lined up for yeah. the final push. Yeah. They're outsiders, but now they feel the joy of the being on the rally. They feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. The, the big Merc's ready. Don't hit anybody. The Datsun, of course, our car, ready. The Sleeps um, Mercedes, the 356. Tom, tall Tom there, another Mustang. We're all ready to roll. Hot and weary, our heroes sit in a queue of traffic, waiting to make the final triumphant return to the Place Vendôme. Still, we haven't arrived in, the, in Place Vendôme, but we're waiting in a very disorganized queue. My personal fan club has arrived here. Hello, guys. Hi. How are you? Elizabeth, have you missed me? Huh? Have you missed me? Yes, David. There oh, you go. <laughs> I've missed, I've missed my Cavisham life. <laughs> You've arrived in Paris. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fantastic. There you go. The Italians make a typically understated arrival into the Place now. The jubilation as an arrival knows no bounds. People have not seen anything like this since 2013. <laughs> During the whole rally, the one, two, three is here. <laughs> Paul's whole entourage Yay! all the way from Australia. No expense spared. <laughs> who devote, devoted his life to Total, to enabled him to do the P2P, here he is. He's well placed, Adrian, Hello. welcome to Paris. <laughs> Thank you. He's my brother-in-law has arrived, a French man who can't afford a hat. Well, the rally might be over, but that doesn't mean the video is. We continue, this is endurance. The rally's over, I finally arrived in Paris like Prince Borghese. So, on the whole, yeah, I've enjoyed elements of it. Haven't enjoyed other elements. I think you know because I've said it as I go along what I have liked and what I haven't liked. I love the people and yeah, you know, I suppose I like the sense of achievement. It is a big thing to drive peaking to Paris. It is tough. Anyway, I'll back in the real world to show you my hotel room. Just a little bath. And uh, that's our room. It's quite small actually. You know, I paid an extra 250 sterling for this, so Steve and his wife and uh, myself and my wife don't all have to be in the same room. So, um, is it worth it? No. Um, anyway, tonight's the ball. We're going to speak to some people, see what they think of the rally. The guests are in their black ties, mingling now, ready for dinner. I hardly recognise them, to be honest. It's a bit of a shabby hotel, but it is a very, very impressive ball. <laughs> Let's hope that uh, chandelier is a fix as well. Wow, huge room. It's not even that very. Look at that view. The silverware is all lined up. There is a tight security. I'm joined by two of my favourite. I'm joined by two of my favourite contestants now, competitors, Gunter and Jill. Hi guys. Uh, Tell me your overwhelming emotion now the rally is over. We what is it? Totally overwhelmed. <laughs> are you tired? Have it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I didn't. I don't have it. I wouldn't mind driving again today. There you go. I don't want to see that ever again. <laughs> By Ludo now came in number two and the classics Ludo the rally's fear ended. How do you feel? Um, I, I feel lucky. I don't want to be modest or anything, but the second was very much, um, you know, concours de circonstances. But we did well, and uh, it's been a fantastic experience. Uh, and I think it's going to be difficult to be equalised. Well, on all, every half of everyone, I just want to say congratulations. You're a great competitor and inspiration to us lesser competitors. Thank you Thanks, very much. Ludo. Looking forward to 2019. Okay. <laughs> Going there by Jonas, uh, Jan's uh, co-driving. How would you sum up the video? How would you sum up the rally? What do you think of the whole rally? The whole rally is uh, fantastic and fun, but also much more harder than I could imagine before. 
Okay. Let that be a warning to anyone watching this for 2019. Yeah, be prepared for everything. In okay. The core and mentally and physically, not physically, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And, well, the, I... and the, the, the Mongolian the tour guys, they have times you can rest to do it. Okay. Has, can Some... you take it to the car? Sum up for me, if you could, the whole rally in one sentence. I think the best thing is uh, the experience in Mongolia and other countries and meeting other people, including you, sir. Okay. There are people milling around here hoping to get a glance at the people who were actually on the rally. Just wandering around Paris for the last uh, few hours here. Very impressive city. I just met somebody. Should tell us what you've got there. It's a, what winner, it's a winning cup. Wow, incredible. Yeah, and I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> You've nicked it. I nicked it. <laughs> so Bruce and Harry Washington, number 14, that is actually the winning car of the Peking to Paris 2016. Incredible. Uh, that's the, um, the, in the vintage class, and Mark Pickering won in the classic. And coincidentally behind it, we've got the second car. So the silverware is being packed away. <laughs> the winners are returning to their normal lives. <laughs> How, silverware away. <laughs> I know. How do you sum up the rally? Uh, about the driver of the Burgundy Aurelia, uh, the Lancia. Tell me, summarize the rally in one sentence. It has compressed 10 years of every experience of life and emotion into 37 days. Wow, that's good. <laughs> Tourists, they head back to their Brighton lifestyle <laughs> now, putting the rally behind them. Steve, how's the rally been for you? Yeah, it's fantastic. Good. I really enjoyed it. Good. Thanks for suggesting it. No problem. <laughs> Who still wears, yes. like me, his badge. Looking we can't pull it down. This man won Spirit of the Rally. The next trip is to be done trip to Fiji. <laughs> How do you summarise your feelings now you've finished the rally? It was an extremely intense experience of intensely good and intensely not so good. And... Uh, I feel, do feel a very considerable sense of achievement. Great. Tell our viewers, because they won't know, what car were you in? I am in car 25, which is the Bentley for a quarter litre open car. Lovely. With, without, uh, without any sort of weather protection whatsoever. So I have been... I take my hat off to you. I mean, it, I tell you, viewers, it's hard in a 1970s car. It's a hell of a lot harder in your car. So well, well done. we have had rain and snow and hail and every other element thrown at us. Great, thanks a lot. That camera. I know, but I'm videoing it for everybody on the rally. That's so, right. so what am I saying to you? Though? What you're saying is what you just said. How, how many times have you done the P2P? Well, this is the fourth time we've finished it. And wow. I'm wrapped. Would you go back to Beijing? If I said tomorrow. now, tomorrow, tomorrow you go back. Tomorrow. We're hungover today and we're entitled to be. We had a big night last night. But 8 a.m. tomorrow, if we wanted to leave Place Vendôme, drive back to Beijing, absolutely, and race back. That is the spirit of the rally. No, that's it. That's it. It's fantastic. These events are fantastic. I love that. Great. Brilliant. I'm saying goodbye to another hotel, the um, nice kind of palm court of the Intercontinental. Rally might be over, but the video is not. I've met two of the competitors clutching their watches. Tell us what you bought, guys. Well, show us. Show our viewers. Come on. No expense is spared with these two. It's the first time that we're going to be on tour. Wow. Don't let my wife see these, by this, the way. This uh, luxury shop next Anyway, do you think it's a rare day today? <laughs> Maybe we start tomorrow. Ooh. We've had a blast. Have it's been unbelievable. Down, though. Yeah, I've been there, yeah. yeah. Look what they've got. I've been looking for that on eBay. That's well done. Congratulations. The taxi's taking us to Garden Hall. We say goodbye to the Intercontinental, to the adoring crowds, to the vintage cars, to the rally. We're off to get the Eurostar home. How appropriate that my journey should end in a public railway waiting room. It's a long time ago. Do you remember that waiting room I was in in Shanghai for the overnight train to Beijing? I think this is actually worse. Look at the kind of grime around here. Ugh. All things have to end. The rally ended yesterday. We arrived in Paris. The video is ending now. If you watched it all the way through, you know I've enjoyed some things and not liked other things. It's the end of the video, end of the rally. I mean, I've enjoyed a lot of it. I've enjoyed the people, and you know, you know the things I've enjoyed. So it's the end of the end of the, end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. There won't be another one. My rallying career is over. But well, there will be another video. See you soon.